Uh, June 6th, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting and call it to order. Uh, the first item on the agenda tonight is the are the minutes from the May 2nd meeting. Y'all have had them for a while. Do we have any changes that need to be made? If not, I will accept a motion. We do not, no, sir. Yes, sir. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Uh, second item on the agenda is SR 2205. It is a request for a final, uh, excuse me, for site plan approval for Alpha Care. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Casey Potts and I'm presenting Alpha Care on behalf of staff. Um, this is a request of PSGC Properties for site plan approval of Alpha Care, a single unit clinic. Overstreet and Associates is the authorized agent and engineer for the project. The subject property is zoned PUD and is approximately 1.1 acres. The property is located on the eastern side of Greeno Road and lies south of Gayfer Avenue. And the PUD, known as the Greeno Professional Village PUD, requires a mandatory site plan review for each lot. So that's why they're here today. So as you can see, it's to the east of Greeno Road and is currently undeveloped. So the setbacks are defined in the PUD ordinance um, and the, site, the setback requirements are met. The building meets the height requirements set forth in the ordinance as well. Um, architectural um, elevations are provided in your packets um, and also shown on the slide. The materials are painted brick veneer, metal roof, and asphalt shingles. So this is an overall site plan that they've proposed. Um, it, detention is existing and on the western side of the property. Um, and they're proposing ingress from the eastern side with the building lying on the southern side of the property. And this is the landscape plans that they have proposed. The city horticultural list has approved them. So. Um, parking, um, as proposed by the applicant, there is one tenant um, and it is a clinic. Um, clinics require one space for each 200 square feet of floor area used for their offices. Since the building is 3,000 square feet, that means that 15 spaces are required. We have like a hard maximum in terms of parking allowed on site, which is 18. Um, and then 20% of that is three spaces. That's why it's 18. Um, and then three of them will have to be pervious because they exceed the requirement. Um, and then 30 to 40% of the required parking has to also be compact. So those are two of the conditions that we're making on the project this afternoon. Um, and there is an existing sidewalk at the front of the property. Um, the PUD ordinance requires an eight foot shadow box fence be installed at the rear of the property. And they do show that in the landscape plans. The dumpster is screened and located on the northeastern corner of the property. And again, stormwater um, is an existing conveyance system on the property. Um, an erosion control plan was submitted with the application and code enforcement did not have any comments. Um, utilities have been reviewed. ADA requirements shall be met and a traffic study was not required. So the Alpha Care project will have to be considered before the Board of Adjustments in July um, because the PUD ordinance states that the uses permitted shall be business and professional offices such as lawyers, doctors, banks, insurance, architects, and other similar uses but the ordinance does not define what that explicitly means. So we default to the zoning ordinance in terms of defining what is allowed in on the property. Um, so um, historically, the city has interpreted a walk-in, dock-in-the-box style um, medical facility as a clinic. So that's how we're interpreting it for this property. And they'll be considered before the Board of Adjustments in July. So. Um, to summarize, staff recommends approval, conditional approval of case SR2205 with the following conditions. Three parking spaces shall be pervious, five to six parking spaces shall be compact, and then the clinic use shall be approved by the Board of Adjustments. Um, the applicant did provide an updated site plan this afternoon, which um, we will um, confirm whether conditions one and two are met with review this week. So if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. 
and the applicant is here as well. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff at this time? Yeah, this could be for staff or the applicant. It, on the tree removal plan, it looks it looked like they were preserving that 35-inch diameter. I guess it's a pine. It's, it's a real bushy, or maybe it's a cedar. Um, but then it doesn't, it's a little confusing. Um, so did they get permission from the arborist to remove that tree? Um, Besides that for the applicant. Would you mind addressing that? Yeah. Jay Broughton, Over Street and Associates. Uh, the 35 inch pine tree has been uh, deemed to be removed. Uh, we submitted the tree removal plan to the city and didn't see, receive any comments back uh, questioning the removal of the tree. Uh, so, so you're providing additional trees to compensate for that? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, we, we fully intend to provide the number of trees required to make up for it. I had just a couple of quick questions that are also landscape related. Sure. Uh, more suggestions. Looking at your landscape plan, it does, it looks like um, the trees are marching along in a row even sort of without regard to the one that you're preserving. It looks like your, your trees are on the perimeter perfectly evenly spaced even when there's a mature tree in the right of way right next and, and one that's being preserved on the south side. And I would just suggest, you know, maybe, maybe defer a little bit to those existing I mean you'll, it probably will happen in the fee, field but uh, seems like deferring a little bit to those existing trees maybe something you have to do just with the actual um, uh, drip line size yes ma'am we'll consider the existing trees uh, and I had another non-binding suggestion you know, there's the requirement for three pervious spaces uh, pervious spaces can be really attractive if you're using a paver and you know you might consider instead of just randomly having three parking spaces of a different material you know it could be attractive and there's the benefit so what if you had a whole row what if that's you know you could do it at the front of your building just just submitting that for your consideration no, yes ma'am received we'll make sure that that whatever is chosen is you know both functional and aesthetically pleasing so yeah. we'll make sure to consider that yeah. I'm, I'm just asking you to consider maybe more yeah noted okay. and we did just receive that plan today so i know planning commission knows but this is a recommendation to the city council for that so we can work on that and put those plans in between now and the council any other questions for the applicant at this time all right this is not a, a public hearing does anybody from the public wish to speak to this even though this is not a public hearing all right uh, commissioners Hunter, I have a question did we or did we not decide that parking was to be in the rear um, that is not a requirement that was that was something we were a looking suggestion at that the, we brought up um, it was actually in the Reno Road overlay conversation we were looking at implementing that so for this zoning with this PUD that is not required okay and we're just making a recommendation to see the council, correct? That is correct. Commissioners, any further questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion, Mr. Chairman, SR 2205 Alpha Care, moved that we approve subject to that for recommendations. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is ZC 2204 public hearing to consider the request of the applicant Goodwin Mills and Kwood LLC on behalf of the owner Gayford Village Partners to amend the existing PUD sure. for Clump PUD. Hunter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a project I believe you're all familiar with. Um, we have seen this PUD twice and the preliminary plat once. Um, I will kind of say before we get into the, the slides that there's no change in use in what we saw the last meeting. So the, the use and, and the buildings and the lots are um, the same number, the same volume. Um, what prompted this was a change in the road layout due to uh, some interactions with wetlands. 
So just, but just for reference, this is a PUD as shown on the left side of the screen. This is on Highway, to, Highway 181 between the road to the north is Gafer, uh, road to the south is Fairhope Avenue. Aerial on the right shows three existing lots um, uh, compromising this PUD, comprising this PUD. Um, now I have to bring glasses out, unfortunately. I'm getting older. Seems like by the week. Um, so we have two plans here, and I'm going to show you the, the existing plan for a refresher. And, and down there in red is where the change is being proposed. Um, if you recall, that area had not only floodway, but it was also headwaters of Cowpen Creek and had some wetlands involved. Um, there was also going to be some constructed wetlands in that area. And um, based on some reviews uh, with the Corps, they've kind of come back and asked for, there's a conflict with, I think, what the Corps wants and what the city wants with connectivity. So the, the ask on the table, and I'll show you the revised plan, removes that road and its ingress and egress on that side to Highway 181. Um, there is a little bit of a change in the lots shapes and sizes, uh, but, uh, and I'll show you those in a second. But in general, you still have the same number of lots. Um, the big change is that the unit three, which if you recall is approved for convalescent nursing home assisted living, uh, will be accessed from Gafer, which primary would have been the primary access anyway. And then the corner lot will be accessed from either Gafer or Highway 181. Hey, Hunter. Yes, sir. Do the wetlands cross the entire unit three? Um, I'm going to kind of show you with my, my mouse here and it, there, this is the low spot. So they kind of go, you can see the dark area. That's the lowest spot. So you actually have a floodway through there and then a wetland buffer around there. Cause I was thinking even the three would have been built up from back when they used to land planes. Yeah. Well, and, and if you, there's, if you recall, there's an old farm pond where the road is here in this area and generally, um, Filling that required some wetland mit mitigations. So that is happening on site, not by a wetland bank. So there are constructed wetlands in this area as well. Okay. So it, it's also, it's what's natural and then constructing some of the wetlands and, and then you have your standard detention areas um, that we saw during the preliminary review. So um, the lot layout as, as approved is shown on the screen and then this is the changes um, you see a small lot here where in the previous plan that not that lot was not there that is actually a small lot for the lift station uh, sewer lift station that would be provided and that piece turned over to the city for ownership um, the like I said the ingress and in egress is really a big issue um, one of the the comment staff had and really through the evolution of this PUD was very concerned with unit three and having some connectivity to the, the rest of the property. Um, you know, there's, there's not much opportunity here except for if you recall, we, and I think it's best seen on the, the screen, there is a, a multi-use trail walkway along the, the eastern or western side of the property. Um, potentially, staff is thinking that that may can be a multi-use trail that's widened at, at minimum be a, some, an opportunity for low speed vehicles, i.e. golf carts, if the assisted living is here to get around into the commercial lots. Certainly that Fairhope Avenue, Gafer, or without a doubt Highway 181 is not appropriate for those, but it would at least provide an alternative for, for those residents to get to the commercial without having to, to get out onto. Uh, 181. There is a requirement to have pedestrian connectivity to, from Unit 3 in. That's still on a note on the, the plat. Um, but like I said, there's Unit 3 size changed slightly from 10.63 acres to 10.39. Otherwise, the uses are, are similar. Um, this does not change the conditions of approval of the previous PUD. So those are listed here at the bottom of the screen. What this does do is it's a domino effect. It seems like a simple change, but by removing that ingress egress, 
you, you can change turn lanes, traffic studies or have requirements. You know, that dominoes into utility placements, which might bump into green space issues, um, the buffer that was provided on 181 sidewalks. So we do have a approved preliminary plat. If this uh, amendment is approved, we do recommend coming back and revising that preliminary plat. That will give staff of, at all levels a chance to review all of those changes, both utilities and uh, the planning department and, and public works, give everyone a chance to review those changes and, and not miss, miss them. So this would in, in effect void the, the existing preliminary plat and come back for a new one. In your staff reports, I didn't, because we added the master development plan, a lot of times you can just amend that. Um, this, this case actually came in right before we had those, so it's not in place. So what, I, what you see on the screen in red is just those six conditions that were in the existing PUD case. So I did add them there and would recommend if the planning commission so chooses to approve this, to add those six conditions along with the one we added for this case that a new application for preliminary plat is submitted to the Planning Commission for approval, making that case SD 21.33 null and void. And I'm uh, happy to answer any questions. Question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, so we're dropping one lot, is that right? You're there, not there were 12 perimeter lots originally, and now it's down to 11. You see that there's still 12. But are you counting that little lot? Where I am because that little lot. So uh, today, if you're putting a lift station in the city, actually need we found this out through getting some grants. The city needs to actually own the property for if it's a public uh, lift station, city actually needs to own the property to be able to apply for grants and things like that. So that's been a recent change. And that little lot is a lot of record that will be turned over to the city. But that's where this so lift station. That's your 12th lot. That's your 12th lot. Okay, now, let me ask you another question. Uh, and then I want to comment about the, the lot on the corner. Mm -hmm. If unit three has got to have connectivity, needs to have connectivity pedestrian wise, mm -hmm. right? Maybe a golf cart or something like that. Mm -hmm. Instead of on the north, why don't you just come down the edge uh, of uh, the, the southern edge of unit three around the corner and tie into the cul de sac right there? I mean, that looks like a no brainer to me. It's possible, and I, mean, I do just, believe you don't need. What do you need? Ten feet, five feet. So uh, that can uh, happen. An idea of I was looking at is connecting that road on, along a trail, just as close to the wetlands as you could get without violating them. Roads don't have to be straight. I've actually seen roads that curve before, <laughs> and you know, right where that unit is, just. Um, you know, have a kind of a slightly meandering road that they can't build up within a certain distance of the wetlands anyway. Just go right along that and connect out to Gafer. Then you've got your connectivity both ways because this thing really doesn't meet the spirit of our connectivity when you've got how many units is in this residential here? The residential was approved, ooh, it's not on this one, at 240. So Forward. any of those people that want to go over there to Gafer and get a pizza at that place, you know, got to get out on Green Oak to then go on Gafer rather than just cut straight through to Gafer. You mean 181? And you're putting all that, I'm at 181, excuse me, and you're putting all that extra pressure on 181. Um, and that would be a suggestion I'd have, just just put a little meandering connector going over there on Gafer. It should be far enough back from the light at that point. Yeah. Did, did I were y'all able to review the, the actual comments from the Corps of Engineers? Um, just look at their wording is sort of like it became apparent that they didn't, but Dever says they prohibited them. So I'm just wondering what the actual. I, I did. Question for the engineer of record. I think they were, we weren't involved in that permitting okay, process. So it, wasn't, it wasn't shared. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and, and then one more on the corner lot, you're given giving them a chance, an option of going out to 181 or going to Gaifer? No, th this is conceptual. So we, as we typically would, we're going to look at that in the preliminary plat. So where they're ingress and egress, regardless of which option it is, ALDOT, even though uh, Gaifer is not a state road, they are looking at things within certain intersections. So there's a traffic signal at that intersection. 
so they would look at where that would be appropriate. It just doesn't well, seem to make a lot of a lot of sense with all of the with all of the turnouts on the 181 in and out. It, it doesn't make sense to have one lot to have another turnout on the 181 to go to Gayford, especially since they're adjoining. Yeah, and and for that for that access, I'm not sure if they would look at it like there's there was three approved before, so this would be three. Uh, now I'm not sure exactly how that would be looked at. Uh, if you recall, the the former plan had three entrances, ingress, ingress on 181. Right. Um, You're still showing the curb cuts on uh, Gayford. Yes, now that unit three would definitely it doesn't have any other access in this currently proposed plan. It is only, um, and I, I think the. I think the road could curve around the wetland. I can tell you practically, looking at what it would it would require a change to unit two. Mm -hmm. I think, um, but I think that's something to, to ask the applicant. Well, I mean, it could curve across and it could cut, cut into you know the wherever they want. Do they have plans for unit three? Is that it's a, no? That's just there. retail. Uh, that's it's the a, assisted living assisted convalescent, convalescent nursing home. So no no retail here. So the, you know the. People he coming here are not going to be going over here to get pizza. No, I said there's a pizza place on Gayfer out there. Okay. About a mile down on the right. Right. So. Um, Lee's always hungry. Always <laughs> 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 the pizza place. Just have time to stop. Um, I but, think that there should we're heavily access and egress and ingress on the south side that we're throwing everything out onto Fairhope Avenue and to 181 that I think one ingress and egress on Gayfer is needed, especially we could do any kind of a bridge over that or some kind of curve in the road to what if there's an accident on 181 or, or Fairhope Avenue, we need some kind of ulterior <coughs> motive to, of transportation to get out. And with school traffic, with the elementary school being right there i think that that's needed and uh jeremy sasha with gmc is here representing the client so if y'all want to discuss some of those options hunter what was the what was the um the final say with al dot i because i remember that was a big deal with this with the ingress and the ingress with al dot coming on to 181 where there's going to be a one right turn so so does that all that go away or are they still involved? Well, that that's so because the the cars are still here. Yeah, you know, you know what, what she's you know so. So there were turn lanes required. Right. That, that gets those off of 181 keeps traffic flowing. Right. Which is L dot's concern. Um, by removing that, um, and what we're kind of waiting to see now with the traffic study and see what requirements are, see if L dot approves it. What's likely to happen is that turn lane is increased in length because you're losing a method of ingress and egress. So, if this plan is approved, you know what would that turn lane look like? How far does it go north? Um, what conflicts arise from that? You know, there's a water line that's got to be installed. There was um, a 20-foot landscape uh, area right there at the front of the property. There's drainage. You know, there, there's a lot of things that have to go in, but. Um, I believe that was the 181 side. Is that was the 181 lines. side? But uh, yeah, I, I was just curious because <clears throat> I, I agree. Dumping all the traffic is already busy there, mm -hmm. right there. It's tight. So I almost would like to see the cul-de-sac on the west side of uh, the development, back in the back, and then have the ingress and egress of one access to Gafer, where I feel like to, then the traffic is distributed evenly. Um, yeah, I don't see a lot of difference with the one change versus the other, but I just think this is a great opportunity to get a connection to Gafer, and that yeah. would just to me be a game changer just for the people that live there for years to come. They would have you know be much more pleasant for them getting in and out saving them time whenever they're you know going to the you know to the west and this you know the, that's that's something i do um, 
want to invite the engineer up and discuss. All right. Let's well, bring him up and talk to him because I think it's something that with some creativity, I think they could do it and not really lose a whole lot out of this. Yeah. The the plan internally, if you recall, was proposed to us to be private streets. So only the, the streets paralleling 181 and Fairhope Avenue were public to be turned over to the city. Right. I think they see if there's there's options there. So. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Hunter. Um, will the developer like to speak at this time? Jeremy Sasser with Goodwill Mills and Kaywood. How are you all? Good. How are you doing? Hey, I'm all right. Um, the let's go to the traffic study first. I'm trying to remember everything that was brought up. Um, we have received a revised study that we have we're internally reviewing right now. But to speak to Hunter's question, it does suggest that we lengthen the turn lane to the main entrance in Hunter from I think it was 100 to 175 feet. Um, that turn, that traffic study also still recommends a right in, right out only to, okay. I believe it's lot 13, the corner lot, where the existing road connected, or the, not the existing road, the road, the, the original, the, the original, <laughs> yes, well, uh, the traffic study is saying that a right in, right out onto 181 there is uh, required or suggested. 181 or Fair 181. 181. Okay. One on the northeast corner where the red circle is on the screen. Got it. This must be 181. This is Fair Yeah, has to be. Sorry, trying to. What was. The well, I, my big thing is I, you know, and, and I, I think be willing to, you know, give up something, you know, to make it happen if. if it puts a hardship on y'all, but I, you know, if, is there any way y'all could connect to County Road, uh, to, excuse me, to Gaffer? Um, and I'm just, I'm looking at that wetland and I'm just seeing, you know, that's just so many houses going and where, you know, you're, you know, proposing a new, you know, cul-de-sac. Can we put the, can we put the new proposal on there right here where that cul-de-sac stops? Um, I mean, why it even stops there? Who cares? I mean, why not stop it, you know, at the very edge of the lot? I mean, once you get to that lot, it's not going anywhere else anyway. But once my, you start. But, but my suggestion is, is I guess it's going to the pump station, lot 11, but my suggestion is, and it would be so much nicer for these 240, you know, houses, 500 people living in this thing for the next 20 years, if that could be connected just going right along the edge of the wetlands to not mess with the wetlands, and then connect to Gaffer, and you could tie it into wherever your ingress egress for Unit Three is going to be from Gaffer. Also, okay. it wouldn't be heavily used, but it'd be very convenient for the people, you know, whenever they're going west on Gaffer, rather than to have to pull out and cross what's eventually going to be a four-lane, you know, heavy traffic road. Instead of having to pull across that, they could just take that little side road, go straight to Gaffer, and relieve that much pressure at what's going to eventually be just, you know, mm -hmm. one of those. Things I'm going to have to sit here and listen to Art Dias, you know, bitch about forever and ever. You know, one of those intersections. Yeah. Lucky dog. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Don't know how to answer that one. Yeah. Um, no, I mean the answer is no, can y'all no, can y'all connect to County? Well, you know, looks like there's room. to Gaper. There's, there's plenty of room. And I'm just thing, wondering if y'all can use some creativity. Yeah, you, you know, we we can get that. a man on the moon. So can we use some creativity? and get a road that would connect to your unit three ingress egress anyway Even and just the connect it right two, there well one yeah. thing i'll that diagonal that's not being sorry i know i'm talking to everybody but it, it, even i, if I, I, I understand corner. what you're asking one of the, the issues with that is part of the preliminary plat that was approved we uh agreed to do four to one wetland mitigation for the wetlands that we are filling mm -hmm. so we are already using four, a little over four acres of unit three on that south end where it abuts those wetlands. Mm -hmm. As our on-site mitigation, we are building a constructed wetland there already. Mm -hmm. So that would cut off that corner of being able to turn and go and zig and zag because we are, we're putting that constructed wetland there to protect Calpin Creek 
and to enhance what is there now. Is there, I mean, I, I think that's laudable and, and I really actually really like the idea of not crossing this, but is there a way to shift where you're enhancing the wetlands to the east? Or, or, could, or could you, you know, make a 90 degree turn and go along the property line of Unit 3 until you yeah. get to that point. And, you know, wherever you're going to enhance those wetlands, still go to the other side. I mean, I live on Calpin Creek and, you know, really appreciate y'all taking care of it as much as possible. Um, you know, but I just, Jeremy, you know, we, we don't have a copy of the plans for that. And I'm just, you was, know. Was part of your mitigation uh, involved in crossing, initially crossing the wetlands with a road? We were, we went to the core twice with that. This, I think it was Ms. Bryant that asked that question if Hunter had seen that. We went to, the, our consultant went to the core twice trying to kind of say, all right, this is what we're proposing to do. Um, and the first time they said, decrease the impact. So we took it from like 350 feet down to 150 feet. And that is what was shown on the preliminary plat. They said, not good enough. Is that a road and fill and a culvert? Yes, ma'am. And we, we brought it across Calpin Creek as, we cut it down to the bare minimum of trying to get that connection there and the core just was but, no. But, but the point is now you've got a you've got a new proposal where you're not crossing there. So Correct. That, that ought to be a credit for your for your mitigation. All right, let me they, let me they jump in there. The uh, I'm sorry. The wetland mitigation. There's a farm pond. Yeah, uh, I'm familiar uh, with it. You know where I'm talking about mm -hmm. up close to the highway one eighty one. Yeah. Right. So filling that in based on our wetland ordinance required the four to one mitigation on site. A farm pond? So they haven't mitigated for this yet. Yeah, it, it showed up on the core uh, jurisdiction, as a jurisdictional wetland. Hmm. There's been some recent changes in the way wetlands are considered jurisdictional or non-jurisdictional. But to answer, I understand what you're asking, Mr. Dice. The wetlands along Calpin Creek really are only about two foot either side of the center line of the creek, so it wasn't a trim Crossing Calpin was not a tremendous wetland impact. It was the waters of the U.S. impact that was giving the Corps the most heartburn with that. Because up, up until it gets to Gaffer, it is considered waters of the U.S. So, and that is what they did not want. Uh, we, just, we, we couldn't get it permitted. Yeah, but they can go put 3,000 acre island in the middle of Mobile Bay and it's all fine, right? Was was a bridge versus fill in a culvert ever part of the discussion as a way to minimize impact? We submitted it both. We submitted it with a culvert, and then we submitted it with pipe. The way the regulations work, even if we put a bridge there, because of height and shade, it, the bridge still would not have. Okay, you'd have to negated like those 30 feet or something yes, to we not would have. shade that, okay. And that just wasn't feasible. Yeah. It just seems like it would minimize the impact. It's okay, so I guess we're back to our question of can I, I, you, can you, unit two. I, I think the, unit two. I think the taking the multi-use trail or taking the trail on the northwest and making that a golf cart trail and then having pedestrian connectivity between the cul-de-sac and unit three, I think would give those residents plenty of connectivity to come over and use that site. Now I understand- If they have a golf cart. Yeah, but- Or if the place they live, I mean, you would think a home, a com a home like that would have something so. like that for its citizens to use or its residents to use. And that is going to be kind of a, convalescence home is not the top word but a assisted living independent living facility so uh, so they might have a van yeah the, the, well, or if it's but raining. then you're you yeah. could possibly be taking a public road right through the middle of it uh, I just think I don't know I wish I hadn't voted for this thing when I did to start with to be quite frank I mean it's I wish when we started this thing that we had just looked at it with the you know a little bit of a paradigm paradigm you know difference to and require the you know gate for on the front end it's it's crazy to have that many units and allow that many units there um, without some kind of connection to gate for 
and I understand, you know, the private roads and people wanting to have, you know, gates in here because with all of our crime in Fairhope, you know, we certainly need to have gates to keep people out. Yeah. Um, well, I remember why we didn't, why people didn't want the, because they said Gaper was more residential than Fairhope Avenue because you had the construct the commercial on Fairhope Avenue and you didn't have the the commercial on Gaper, so we were trying to do like si like property on on each side, and now we're stuck. Well, with the commercials, we we were, and that's why we have the five commercial, and that unit three is for a you know you know more of residential you know old folks home, but you know that doesn't have necessarily explain you know us getting away from the connectivity aspect, which is one of the most important aspects. That's what all of the you know whenever any of the professionals come in and tell us you know, what we need to be most careful about on the Planning and Zoning Commission, they, you know, the one thing they always agree on is connectivity, you know, to just keep, you know, 500 people from, you know, Stop. having to go out on 181 even if they have no need for 181. So it looks like we're at a standstill on what mm -hmm. we all agree on, that there's a heavily discharge on the, the 181 and, and Fairhope Avenue, and then we're blocked on what we can do on Gafer. So what do you, what do you propose? What, what creativity? I, I tell you what, I, what I love, I love to say we, we make a motion to approve it subject to some type of a, you know, automobile connection to Gafer and let them use the creativity and figure it out. I mean, yeah. he looks smart as heck. We put a man on the moon, we can yeah. figure well, that one out. I was him on the spot to tell us what he could do. Mike, did you get that recorded? <laughs> Thank, thank you. <laughs> I, I would have to confer with my client. Um, yeah. I, I think that's probably the best bet. I, I don't want to commit to that here, but I understand okay. your concerns. Um, yeah. I, and this is, again, this is a PUD amendment, so this is a recommendation to the city right. council. So. I think there's some time to... I'd like to make that as a recommendation, and then they've got, you know, they'll be, Corey, you'll be seeing it again. Yeah. You know, and, and then... This thing has and, changed. And Corey will be our representative <laughs> at the city council. He'll know kind of what we're trying to get at. And, it, it, and, a, then, and then at compelling. that point, Corey, hopefully, they'll either have a connection on Gay for a really, you know, compelling reason of why they can. Well, yeah, but by the time they get to city council, they may be able to illustrate how they could do it. Right. With more certainty. Yeah. I think a proposed site plan of what the assisted yeah, development is going to look like, what kind of facility we may be able to come up with or visualize better what. And I, I can tell you that that's not, we've been asking, that they just don't have that client. We, we've, this is a lot we've, tr we've tried. Yeah, this is <laughs> that, that well, they have marketed, not marketed, but they've had yeah. interest expressed and just and nobody has. Right. So you don't Show really know what you. kind of no, assisted no. facility. Yeah, we've yeah. been asking that question since the beginning. Yeah. Right. Because which which point, is another thing because if they have none, then at some point they'll come back and ask for that to be changed to, you know, retail or individual <laughs> residential, or what have you. And I don't mean that in a bad. No, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just, yeah. you know, I've been up here 22 years and I haven't seen a, you know, a single pud that hasn't had a, you know, half dozen changes in over 20 years. A lot of times that's good, and most of the time the changes are for the better. But. Um, but that's just something. But anyway, this is a uh, public hearing. So if you don't mind saying up front, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing and, and see what people have to say. And then um, we'll go ahead and turn it over to the commissioners. Would anybody wish to speak to this item? This is the uh, catty corner from Walmart on uh, Highway 181. Uh, yes, sir. Good evening. Um, my name is Gary Gover, and I live at 300 Lincoln Street. When I looked at uh, this uh, subdivision and all the others that had a uh, public hearing tonight, I was uh, asking myself, how is this uh, development going to relate with our school systems? And uh, so I, be I looked for especially in a, in a larger subdivision like this, I look for some facility that's going to be a pickup and drop-off point for school buses with some kind of uh, protection for kids uh, in inclement weather. Um, and I didn't see anything that uh, solved that problem for me. Uh, in addition, when there is a school nearby and, and our east 
elementary school is just a mile and a quarter down the road, so it will be possible for children to be uh, designated as walkers, which means they can walk to school, walk home, ride a bicycle to school, bike home. Um, I didn't uh, see accommodations in the design in the subdiv subdivision that uh, uh, necessarily addressed that. And, and then it raises the question, is there a safe route to the nearby schools uh, for the walkers and the bike riders and so on? And I think that once you leave this property, your ability to safely get to the school is uh, questionable, either on Gafer or on Fairhope Avenue. You've got a safe sidewalk on the south side of Fairhope Avenue that's mm -hmm. rarely used, mm -hmm. but the kids would have to cross Fairhope Avenue twice. Right. That's the, would be the downside to that. So there, there are some issues. I, didn't, uh, I haven't seen them addressed in the past, but it seems to me that those are concerns that we really need to address when we put developments like this on the map. Thank you. Good question. Yes, sir. So if you'll state your name and your address for the record, please. Sir. I'm Frank Connell. I live at 20605 Lowry Drive in White Grove. White Grove is the area to the, uh, to the top of the map on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. The part on the left-hand side is private property owned by Mr. Pouncey. My problem has been, for 23 years, stormwater management. My backyard gets flooded every time we get two inches or more of rain. The plan that was when this was developed of where the water was go doesn't work. Because what where the water is going is down the back of my property, behind the, my neighbor's property, the freeze, and it goes into a pond owned by Mr. Pouncey on private property. If it's a big overflow, a little bit of it does go to the left on to, uh, to the property here, around where the trees are, right about the middle of there, is so where it goes. Now, I've been told before that I'm wrong, that the water doesn't go there. I've lived there for 23 years. I know where the water goes. There is a berm behind my house and, and, and the neighbor's house to the, to the south, but the berm does not extend uh, northward. So there's prob probably, although I don't, can't say that, but I think there's overflow from, from the, uh, I wish I had a pointer here. <laughs> Does this thing work? <laughs> you can use the mouse right there. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, so I'm living right in this area right here. And I'm at the end of the block. From, from about here, as you go north, yes. the water flows to, to Gafer Avenue into the ditches. So there's not a problem on the, on the north side. But I'm on the south side, in the corner. And the water here flows this way, goes south. We have addressed this problem before. I've talked to the former, former mayor, a couple of mayors back. He's actually walked the property and has agreed with me that there is a problem. I was told that at the time that either Mr. Pouncey's property or Gafer Extension, uh, be, excuse me, became city property, that at that time they could probably address the problem. Now I have not seen anything or anybody hardly talked about stormwater management here, so I don't know where it's going, but it would appear to me it's very easy. If it's along this western edge, it would appear to me it wouldn't be too much very difficult for us to tie right into that and take care of the problem that we've, we've had, again, for 23 years. Right. And I would suggest that you, that you get a card from Mr. Sasser. Um, we're kind of at the 30,000 square foot view, I mean 30,000 foot altitude view right now. This is more just kind of where the puzzle pieces go, the, the engineering uh, with the stormwater you right. know, they've got some ideas such as the pump station and then you have to allow for that and kind of where the ponds will be, but the details of the engineering come in with the site plan review later. Yeah, we just we just wanted the problem solved. But, but this is a good time to bring that up before, you know, before they come so they know exactly. to look toward that. 
Thank but you. But if you'll, I think he's got a, no, no put it anyway. All right, would anybody else wish to speak to this item? Yes, sir. Good evening. My name's Philip Wilson. I live at 231 Royal Lane. Uh, I want to make sure, I'm, first of all, that I'm oriented correctly here. Uh, north is to the right, and that would be Gaver Avenue on the right edge, and the west bound, uh, the west boundary of the property is to the top of the screen. Is that correct, Hunter? Uh, which leaves on Fairhope Avenue, you've got two entrances. Plus, you've got a third that appear to be at the intersection of Fairhope Avenue and 181. Is that correct? Almost two, to the corner. Two, two mm -hmm. on Fairhope Avenue and then two on 181. Yeah, but the lower, the left-hand entrance, uh, entrance and exit into this property from is at 181 and close to the intersection of Fairhope Avenue. Well, you see the where you are. Right. I'm sorry. Yes, I mean the the to the. South, South of the property is yeah. um, Fairhope Avenue, and to the east is okay. 181. Yes, sir, right. you're correct. So I'm oriented correctly. Yes, sir. So you, you, in a, Fairhope Avenue traffic is already increasing uh, a lot. I've only been here three years, but in that time, it is already increasing dramatically. You've got three businesses located on the uh, south side of Fairhope Avenue there that are ingress and egress into Fairhope Avenue. One of them also has, Bay Mar Bayview Market also has ingress and egress onto 181, south of this intersection. Well, what you're proposing to do, or what the site plan is proposing to do, is to add more traffic into and out of Fairhope Avenue. But also at that intersection, you're putting two more veins of traffic right there at an already busy, quite busy intersection which should necessitate a redesign of the intersection or, as you pointed out earlier, moving traffic away from Fairhope, hopefully, uh, and using Gafer Avenue uh, as a point of ingress and egress. And losing one entrance, I, I'm asking that you would consider or encourage you to consider Losing one entrance and uh, ingress and egress on Fairhope Avenue, and losing the lower uh, 181 ingress and egress that's closest to the intersection of those two, because of the amount of traffic, the right hand turn, left hand turn, because there's no signage there, there's no permitting at, at this time without a redesign of the intersection to make it right turn only, left turn only, or anything like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So all of that really needs to be looked at at the 30,000 foot level sure. when you're considering the entire site. Right, right. That's all I have to say. Good Thank point. you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? In that case, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and turn the meeting back over to the commissioners. Hunter, do you have something to I, I can address some of those. Um, uh, Mike, Jeremy might want to speak on the drain itself, but I can, I can address a couple of those things. Um, and I think, like you said, this is the 30,000 square foot, or, or foot view. You know, I'm saying what you, you know. Um, this is a PUD amendment. The technical merits uh, follow up with the details of preliminary plat. There's one thing unique about this project. We've already seen a preliminary plat. Um, Thing, this will change, which is why we're requiring a new one. But but it does let us um, start to speculate on some of those answers, unlike most PUDs we see. So um, sidewalks, uh, footnotes on some of those things, even the undeveloped Unit 3 has notes on that plan that there should be sidewalk connections to three sides of that property. Um, there was a sidewalk provided along Gafer Avenue, sidewalk provided along 181 frontage. Um, the so we have con uh, did discuss some of those good idea about a, uh, I know there's a proposed clubhouse within the residential unit I'm not sure if that can provide some shelter for school school kids um, you know the preliminary plat we did review drainage um, at that one obviously that that will change somewhat um, the in the technical merits of how that's flowing and what problems can be resolved to the property of the west I, I don't know that answer um, the 
Not much has changed in this on the traffic uh, on hitting Fairhope Avenue, and there was lots of discussion on those and reviews, including conversations with ALDOT. And this layout was approved. Uh, if you recall, we did make a change. Uh, there was some turn lane, left turn lanes coming out, um, and it was proposed just striping. Um, actually, those are going to be elevated medians that keeps that traffic flowing properly. Um, so. It, uh, now, does this change in this traffic study come back to us um, require more changes because there's not as many places to, uh, we're cutting off one ingress egress, or does the solution have a, uh, an access to to um, Gafer? Don't know those answers yet, so we will certainly review those. But I, I do think those layouts have been reviewed and approved. Those can change based on the volumes and traffic patterns. Um, but drainage, I, Jeremy, do you have anything to add for the, the white grove that's flowing? I know you are collecting at the pond there and providing some detention, but anything flowing to Fairhope Avenue that could be helpful? Uh, the drainage in this development really is split into two different drainage basins, pretty much running down the middle here from uh, west to east. You have a drain here along 181, and then you have the drain here of Calpin Creek, and everything flows to 181 from this property. We are not flowing, we don't have any water going back towards White Grove. Uh, during the preliminary plat process, drainage was mentioned at the public hearing, so I actually went out there just to look at White Grove, see, okay, are there pipes that might be clogged or what's going on? Um, White Grove really was built where everything just surface drained off the street and did not really get into pipes, just kind of got into the low spot on the ground right as soon as it left the asphalt and just kind of goes out there into the woods. Um, and we, I could see where a little bit of it would come back onto this property in heavy rains because it just couldn't get through Mr. Pouncey's property. Um, and we have every intention of collecting that area and draining that area so that we don't we handle that water that does come in those heavy events and goes through our system um, so I, I think we're doing everything we can on our property to address that water take it bring it through our system and get it back to where it goes now well, and i have again to add something I think is positive is the more adding wetlands is going to help I mean, that, yes. that nature handles flooding and water filtration much better than uh, than we do with concrete and pipe and, um, and sometimes less expensively so that I'm glad to see that yeah. and Jeremy one thing that Mr. Wilson mentioned that you may really want to look at is since the lots on Fairhope Avenue are accessed from the road in the rear mm -hmm. um, you might want to give up you know, this that, one that and one, do this one over here you know, that one entrance on Fairhope Avenue to the east I mean it may not that one here but it's just you know Walmart has two entrances on Fairhope Avenue but if you notice you know one of them is used almost exclusively you know they don't really add much to each other if you watch um, you know one is a ingress and a right turn only and, and so many people just skip and go to the second one anyway it's amazing and that may be something you could give up save some cost and some uh, impervious surface there we'd have to tr talk to the traffic consultant about that right now it's set up as a right in right out right. so there is it's not a full movement access so sure. i would take pressure off the other it may make a lot of sense but i'm saying there might be something just to to look at with the people that are you know, I could mention it to the traffic consultant and just see what his thoughts are. Sure. Just to clarify, isn't the one, I thought I remembered the one on 181 near Fairmont Avenue was also right down. It is. I mean, it yes, ma'am. makes sense. So just, we don't want anybody trying to take and take those lefts, and it'll be the Rays, Median Islands, like Hunter was talking about. And I, I live right down the road, so I, I see what people do there at that intersection all the time, especially coming out of Walmart. Well, that right out is going to be hard after, you know, this thing's built and 
Mm. But there are all the other growth with you know out across the street and everything that right out is going to be backed up beyond that intersection. You know during the busy parts of the day. Yeah, especially but, school traffic. You know, and then the right end people will turn right in on the earlier one. You know that's the one that may not be used much at all because the traffic's going to be backed up behind it most of the time. So you know if you're going in, you turn at the mid midpoint. If you're coming out, you may end up going back to the midpoint to see if you merge into traffic or. Just hope somebody's nice unless you want. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll talk to the traffic consultant. But I, I, no, I understand the concerns yeah. and I uh, valid points. Any other questions uh, this time? All right. Thank you very much. Well, commissioners. I love the idea of making a motion with the requirement to connect to Gaither, and then if it turns out to be too cumbersome, you know, they let the staff know and explain exactly why it is, then, you know, Corey can be our, I like that you motion. know, Corey can kind of be our, our liaison at the city council who kind of know our reasoning behind it, and, mm -hmm. you know, and if it's too unreasonable of an ask, then, you know, city council has the final authority on that. We also need to be thinking that a lot of these 181, there's going to be traffic lights, but either f and then these accesses that are right behind 181, that's not a traffic light, so you're going to have a hard time getting in and out of there. I feel like the further apart those are, the better ability to get in and out, especially if you're only going left. condition that they connect uh, oh, you just moved it off my line to 181 uh, connect, I was just trying to say connect unit 3 and lot 12 to Gaper. or connect unit so there is a connection between I mean it's not lot just connect to Gaper, to it's connecting unit 3 to the rest of it mm -hmm. So let's go before we get there. Lot 12 would be a tough one to connect. We're def we're definitely okay. have a problem. Unit 3. With the recommendation that we connect to Gaifer through unit, unit three. 3. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. All right. I have a motion to recommend approval to the city council subject to staff recommendations as and also having a connection to Gaifer through unit 3. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Yeah. Um, any further discussion? And, and Mr. Chairman, just for clarification, it's the recommendations on, on the screen there, one through seven? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. And um, I guess let's give Corey the second on that. And uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is ZC 2205, Cleveland Cordy Development. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a straight zoning. We don't get many of these for a B2. Um, this is 34 acres. Um, it's at the corner of 181 and Highway 104. Um, the applicant is requesting straight B2 for this acreage. The property is currently in unzoned Baldwin County, um, as shown on the screen on the left. For reference, and I'll get a better map up here in a second, but that red part is the new Publix on 181 and 104. Um, the USA project is to the south. You've seen some other projects around that we'll look at in just a second. The existing, uh, uh, existing on the site is one home, or I think it's actually currently used as a business, office, yeah. but um, it's unzoned, so use is something we, we haven't really looked at. Um, we do look at a uh, comprehensive plan on this, and as you see on the screen, there's an arrow pointing to the subject property. This is squarely in the middle of, since 2004 or five, um, a commercial node. It's exactly where we would want these type of developments. Um, there's no site plan related to this. It is a straight zoning uh, case with conditional annexation. So this will go to the city council. If uh, the zoning is not approved, the applicant has a chance to withdraw the uh, annexation case. 
So um, just to kind of give you an idea of what we've looked at in this area, like I said, the public shopping centers across the street, USA Surgery Center to the south, Rockwell Apartments and 12 acres of commercial to the north, and then Harvest Green East and West and the Waters residential subdivisions um, to the north. This is as good as I could get getting this on the screen, but we do have the uses there and I can zoom in if we need to, but uh, the zoning ordinance does define B2 general business use um, as a district intended to provide opportunity for activities causing noise and heavy traffic not considered compatible in the more restrictive business district. These uses also serve as a regional as well as a local market and require location and proximity to major transportation, transportation routes. Recreational vehicle parks, very light production and processing activities are included. So as you know, this is um, probably our most intense zoning district, but this is also one of our um, heavier, major, most major traffic routes at intersection of 104 and 181. So looking at development patterns, looking at what could happen as unzoned property, we do feel like this is a, a good recommendation. Um, anything obviously that develops, say an accident in the city, will have to fall under all of those rules of the city, sign ordinances, wetland ordinances, um, uh, of course, the zoning ordinance as well. So staff does recommend that we uh, approve this conditional annexation with initial zoning of B2. Again, this is a uh, recommendation to the city council from the planning commission as well. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Hunter. Tell me, tell me before you sit down mm -hmm. about these two ground leases. Uh, the, we're not reviewing those. There's nothing approved in this. This okay, is but, a- but is there, there's not any activity on those two leases. No. Won't be any activity on those two. Cannot leases. develop that property until the, the, we'll, we'll look at whether it follow up in something like this. We're going to have a review of zoning compliance. So whether it is a zoning case that comes to the planning commission, a subdivision case, or just a permit, we're going to look at those things. Um, I know uh, without getting too much in people's business, there's already been conversation about with ALDOT and they're not permitting ingress and egress there. So likely, I won't, I'll speculate a little bit here, likely what will happen, if you recall the Rockwell property to the north provided a connectivity from Harvest Green and provided a, an access road, that will likely connect here and get over to 104 and, and a lot of these developments within this property would access from that road. I'm speculating a little bit. We don't have a site plan. So um, hold, hold that. Mr. Farrell, single tax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are y'all involved in the, in the ground lease? No? Yeah. Nope. Single tax. I, I think okay. when we- But, we, but we, does it come into play at all in terms of where this is going? Well, I mean, you, you got to recall when we get an application that said, hey, we're ground lease to begin construction as soon as possible. Um, that's five weeks ago. So, they, I mean, and since then, they've talked to ALDOT. We will have a follow-up of some sort, depending on what projects are there. So, we don't have that plan yet. So, nothing is being approved, whether that's 10 out parcels or one big project. We don't have anything in front of us to review other than just a straight rezoning case for this property. Okay. Right. Thank you, Hunter. Mm -hmm. um, is the applicant here? Anybody on behalf of the applicant here? Yes, sir. Do you have anything to add to this at this time? Okay. Thank you. Right. We've got a representative of the applicant in the back, back there. Um, I'll go ahead and, by the way, this is just like the last uh, project was a PUD, so um, uh, the last project was a PUD, which is uh, basically is a city council ordinance. Zoning is also done by an ordinance that only city council has the authority to do. So in the last case, and in this case, we simply make a recommendation to the city council, but this serves more as the, you know, the city council will take a certain amount of input. This is more of the public hearing for that. Uh, does anybody from, from the public wish to speak to this side? And this is the intersection of 104 and Highway 181 on the northeast side. All right, in that case, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing at this time. Commissioner. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Case is uh, ZC2205. Uh, is that Cleveland or Cleveland? Cleveland. 
supported development. Um, I would move that we recommend the city council approval of zoning request. I've got a motion to recommend approval of the zoning request. Do I have a second? Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. All right, motion passes unanimously. Next on item on the agenda, a public hearing to consider the request of the city of Fairhope uh, for a zoning amendment. I'm gonna assume everyone read their packet and kind of go through the summary on this one real quick. But if there's any questions, we'll be happy to debate it all night. Uh, this is a pretty simple zoning code amendment. Right now, a kennel or animal hospital is allowed in three zoning districts, B2, B3A, and M2. We do not have any property zoned M2 within the city right now. Um, B3A, as y'all know, is kind of tourist resort. Probably not the best place for a kennel unless it's just a very small, keep four dogs. Um, the, all of all of those uses still require approval by the Board of Adjustment. So it's only based a uh, use based on appeal. So this proposed amendment would allow kennels and animal hospitals with approval from the Board of Adjustments to be located in M1 zoning districts. Just for a reference, the maps on the screen right now show where those are located, generally around Greeno, uh, between Morphe and Nichols, uh, the area where the Public Works building is, and then around the airport. Simple as that. This is a recommendation to the city council to, to make that change to the use ta table 3 1. The use table. Well, y'all finally got to this. I've been really chomping at the bit on this one, Hunter. You're gonna, we're going to debate <laughs> this one for a while? No. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of thoughts on it. Yeah. Um, any questions for staff at this time? Again, this will just be a recommendation since a zoning is, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, uh, only allowed to be done by city council um this is a public hearing does anybody wish to speak to this item at this time if not i'll close the public hearing commissioners yeah. i've got a motion to recommend approval do i have a second Second. Okay, we'll give Art this one. Mm -hmm. uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda, SD 2151, Lone Oak Farms Subdivision. And Mr. Chair, for the record, I'll recuse myself for this one. I'll step out into the hall and then when you all complete your business, I'll return okay. to the next case. Got it, yes sir. Mike? Good evening. How is everybody? Mike Jeffries with the City of Fairhope Planning Department. As I said, this is a public hearing to consider the request of Jade Consulting on behalf of the owner's representative, D.R. Horton. The current property owners are Lynn Booth, C. Wesley Grant, and the estate of Linda Gale Majors. And this is on 57.72 acres at the northeast corner of Pierce Road and County Road 32. It's currently unzoned in Baldwin County District 14. On the screen, the left is the zoning map, void of color. And on the right is the aerial. You can see uh, sparsely wooded um, some fields on the north end. On your screen, the plat, north is oriented to your left. See there's an access point off of County Road 32, access point off of Pierce Road, a stub street to the north. Uh, wetlands, there are wetlands located on the east and southern uh, boundaries of the property. Uh, site da data table, kind of some of the same information we just went over. 82 lots, setbacks. Uh, the green space is on here. Uh, usable green space requires 10%, which would be a little over five acres. Currently provided is 9.23 acres. Uh, for the utilities, all the connections and uh, work done in the right, right of way of Baldwin County will require permitting from Baldwin County Highway Department. They will also be reviewing this application. Baldwin EMC is the electrical provider. Baldwin County Sewer Service is the sewer provider. AT&T Communications provider. And Fairhope Utilities is the water provider. Uh, this development will require some extensive water upgrades, including but not limited to a new 12-inch water main and new lateral connections along County Road 32 will be required 
to service the proposed development. All costs as well as installation associated with the required upgrades are the responsibility of the developer and will be evaluated by the water department at the time of actual construction. You will see these comments listed as a conditional approval at the end of this report as well. Uh, traffic, the traffic study was conducted by Gresham Smith. The, the language below might have been a little confusing in the traffic report. It did reference Harvest Creek. That was the original name proposed uh, for this Lone Oak subdivision. The recommendation based off that traffic report was that no right, right turn or left turn lanes were recommended at the site access driveways and there were no other off-site mitigations recommended for Harvest Creek or Lone Oak um, subdivision. For the drainage, uh, the projects collected in a combination of sheet flow, curb inlets, and grass swells. Both is collected and routed to the proposed wet detention pond. Um, and the, the project will include a stormwater management system that regulates the post-development runoff release below its pre-development rates for all critical storm events as required by our subdivision standards. Uh, the st stormwater report included uh, the proposed development will have no adverse effects to the adjacent properties. The landscaping plans uh, do show that the required street trees are in the right of way between the sidewalk and roadway as required. Area around the detention pond is sodded, landscaped with trees and bushes, and as I mentioned, the green space requirements are exceeded. The largest portion is located on the east side of the property that contains the preserve and a wet pond. Uh, total green space provided is uh, almost nine and a quarter acres, about 16 percent um, total, and the required green space was a little over five and a half acres. Uh, some general comments. There's a note on lot 82, which is on the uh, western side of the property, that there's a future phase two area that needs to be removed. Um, that area is currently comprised of mostly wetlands. A resubdivision of lot 82 may only occur if there were future mitigation of the wetlands can be accomplished, but any regulations at the time of resubdivision would have to be accommodated. Nothing inside of this review um, or potential approval implies that 82 will be further subdivided. Also, there's some drainage infrastructure currently shown in lot 82. That needs to be included in common area one and included with their O&M plan. Uh, the area in question is highlighted uh, below the general area where the outfall structure is. Sidewalks and street trees shall be installed prior to submittal of final plat application. Um, and on sidewalks, the applicant has requested to not install sidewalks along County Road 32 and Pierce Road. Uh, staff does support this request. The nearest sidewalk is more than a mile away. However, at minimum, a 10-foot sidewalk easement uh, does need to be shown adjacent to the right-of-ways of County Road 32 and Pierce Road. A pre-construction meeting would be required prior to issuance of any building permits. So recommendation, staff recommends approval of SD 21.51 Lone Oak Farms preliminary plat with the following conditions. One, remove future phase two area from lot 82. Two, the drainage infrastructure in lot 82 needs to be included in common area one. Three, add a blanket utility or drainage easement to all common areas. Four, add a minimum lot width and area to the site data table. Five, is add the sidewalk easement along the rights of ways of County Road 32 <coughs> and Pierce Road. Six, developers responsible for the construction of and all costs associated with all off-site water service upgrades determined necessary by the City of Fairhope Water Department. Seven, is prior to issuance of any building permit, the final construction documents for the water upgrades shall be approved by the City of Fairhope Water Department. And eight, is all water upgrades shall be installed prior to submittal of final plat application. I know that was a handful of conditions um, in short, those first five were notes that needed to be added to the plat and be reviewed at final plat again if approved. And six, seven, and eight were conditions related to the uh, required water upgrades to make sure that those are accomplished during uh, construction. And on behalf of staff, be happy to answer any questions that you may have tonight. Well, what did the minimum lot width come from? The minimum lot what, uh, for our unzoned properties is 100 feet for unzoned properties with a lot area of 15,000 square feet. So I just wanted a memorial to have that on the plat. So if that lot 82, they did mitigate and came back in, there at least was a number that had to be worked off of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
I just hadn't seen that before, and I was just wondering why we require that. Any other questions for staff at this time? Thank you. I, I, I oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. The, the traffic study is over a year old. There's typically um, in our subregs, it should be current. We actually received this application uh, back in October is when we first started reviewing uh, this project. So being now that it's June, at the time we received it, the traffic study was actually only a few months old. Uh, so kind of through the review process, they had some wetland mitigations that they were working out that required some redrawing of the plat and the layout of the overall development. So that's kind of is the reason of that gap between the time frame of the completion into now. And we do have some explorations. I'm, I don't want to speculate, so I'll be looking that up and we'll answer that before we do those things. But they're different. Some, sometimes it's the traffic counts. You have three years on. Some of them are even shorter than a year. All right, thank you. All right, any other questions for staff? All right, thank you, Mike. Right, yes, sir. Trey, would you like to present on behalf of the developer? Yes, sir. Good evening. Trey Genright, Jay Consulting. Um, thank you, commissioners, for listening to our case. Um, as Mike was mentioning earlier, we submitted this project to the staff in October the 26th last year. Um, we went through several rounds of comments addressing them. Um, primarily one of the larger comments was with the Corps of Engineers review of the wetlands delineations. I think it was mentioned there in a previous case that the Corps may be changing their opinion on how things are regulated with the, with the wetland delineation. And so as such, the wetlands that we had originally submitted back in October have grown to what's shown on the drawing for you tonight. And so that is why the delay is in the project between October and, and now is really just negotiating or working with the Corps. Um, they've got a pretty good backlog. and. It took us five or six months just to get a response back from them, quite honestly, and so that's where we're at tonight as far as the timeline. Um, as Mike said earlier, this project is unzoned Baldwin County. It's currently within your planning jurisdiction. Um, as such, minimum lot size is 100 by 150. It's 15,000 square foot minimum, and so that's dictated the, uh, the lot layout before you. Um, we had done a, a traffic study. We made our initial submittal and then we had a, a the study updated April of 27, 2022 um, to reflect the reduced lot count um, and the findings are, are, are no different than they are now. The offsite improvements are, um, are not warranted with this study prepared by Gresham Smith. Um, the project uh, the development limits is approximately 51 acres. In order to meet your stormwater regulations, we have to do a, um, a downstream analysis where this project becomes less than 10% of the overall drainage basin. So we did a, a study of about 544 acres to make sure that our downstream timing and the hydrographs of the hydrologic model are not impacted. Um, so not only is the pre versus post criteria met, but actually the timing is taken into account and falls within the margin of error on the stream stats, which is a federal uh, program that models uh, runoff capacities for large storm events. Um, the, the two comments that uh, Mike pointed out uh, have already been addressed. They were picked up by the county as well, and so we've addressed them with the city staff and we've addressed them with the county. Um, the waterline comments referred to a 12-inch water main that we will run from County Road 33 back towards the west along the south side of 32 to our western limit, which is right there at Pierce Road. That'll be a 12-inch water main. Um, the city is in the plans of running a 16 inch main down 33 from the whale to 32. And so then our 12 inch line will then connect to it. This is a, a, um, a, mastered, a master plan water system improvement that the city's been working on. And since our project is kind of ahead of a timeline, it's on this developer's responsibility to actually pay for that infrastructure. And so that's a significant um, offsite improvement cost that is being burdened by this project, this project alone. So it's a 12 inch main from 33 back to um, back to our project. Um, they touched on the uh, open space criteria. Um, we nearly double, we almost double that that um, that requirement there. So I'll be glad to address any of your comments that you guys may have or anything that may come up with the public. And I thank you for your time. 
Right. Any questions for Trey at this time? You may have just addressed this, but I, the question about the water flowing underneath 32, the stormwater through the wetland area, I didn't quite understand that. And it looks like it, just looking at the topo and everything, it looks like that ends up in Green Branch. It does. Both of those, both of the project kind of splits mm -hmm. and goes in both directions. It does. And so there's about a 200 acre basin. We had to model about 200 acres on the south, on the west side of the project, and then about 300 acres on the on the east side to get up the whole thing modeled correctly so but there but you solved the problem of water not flowing over 32 because it can't get under or we are looking at it from a our pre versus post on our project what our project is releasing towards um, 32 and is significantly less than what's going in that direction we're also looking at the timing of the water flowing in there we're not improving the culvert under 32 at that point um, we're looking at what our project's creating and its direction in there. The culverts under 32 are undersized. Um, and so that, that's a, we've done several projects with the county, um, and this is probably one of them at some point in the future that'll need to, you know, some grant monies will come in and replace that culvert. It needs to be a much larger structure. Are you talking about the culvert to the um, west of Pierce Road? The culvert that's at the intersection east of Pierce Road. There's a culvert under 32 at the, at the, in the wetland corner right there. Okay, because I know the, the one there's a culvert just a little bit further to the west in the house next door. That's flooded. Yeah. That culvert gets undersized as well and gets clogged up every now and then, and that house so is the, flooded twice. So the pond on this project is, is, is pretty significant. Um, it's a wet feature. It has a, a, a level spreader on the back side of it. Um, but we're, we are um, enlarging it considerably to help offset flows that are, we would have been going to 32 is now going to the other direction. And so we were able to mitigate some of the flow going there. And so our models show that those numbers have been reduced considerably going toward 32, but I'm not stating tonight that we're repair, fixing the, the problem at 32. That's a, that's a much larger county project. That culvert needs to be replaced. It's outdated. I think it's an old metal, corrugated metal pipe. It's just too small. Does it back up and flood the land like your lots 59 through 50, 50 it's backing up and f it's backing up creating headwater along the lot 82 section right there is where it's backing up in there the property starts raising um as you go towards the wet the north the property raises in elevation considerably okay so it's on the zoomed in section uh, also was that a was it a pine plantation I it's cut now. So there, there was planted pines in there. Well, there, there's still there's still pines on some of the. Yeah, I think they, I, th I want to say they come in there and a timber crew cut some of the pines in there. It, uh, the only reason I asked is I noticed. Uh, yeah, I was curious when I saw just like those three trees being preserved, what the other trees were, and if there was any way that. And it, it, uh, That's pretty rough. It, yeah, it looks like kind of looks like a hurricane hit it. Oh, they did. Hurricane yeah. did hit it hard. I live yeah. near there. It did. It's very hard. I have a, I have a question. Um, you may not be able to answer this, but 82 lots, what are the amenities? Um, there is the, primarily it's the 16% the or was it 16 acres of open space. We've got walking trails, a wet lake, um, and kind of created that as the, as the amenity feature. Any other questions for Trey at this time? All right, thank you, Trey. All right, I'll go ahead and this is a subdivision request, so we'll actually um, have the final word on this one. This is not a recommendation to City Council. We'll actually vote this one up or down here tonight. So this is your only stab at it, so I'll go ahead and open the public hearing at this time. Does anybody uh, wish to speak to Lone Oak Farms subdivision? This is intersection of Pierce Road and County Road 32. So please come up and state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. I'm Jessica McDill with the firm of Chasen and Chasen. We're here tonight representing Don and Curtis Pilot, who are the principals of Sunny Hill Farm, which uh, Sunny Hill abuts several roads there, but at this project, uh, we're right across Pierce Road. And so what I will do this evening is um, do a little bit of a summary of the legal, environmental, 
and engineering concerns that we have that we can demonstrate objectively to the commission that would re um, make it clear that this project should be denied subdivision approval. And so when you look at, at these projects, um, many times people come to you with concerns because they're not professionals in the field. And so what we have done here to bring the information to you tonight, I'll address some of the legal issues. And then we have Gina Todia, who is a wetland specialist. We erroneously uh, refer to her as an engineer in a letter we wrote, but she's a wetland specialist. She'll speak to those issues specifically. And then we have Kenny Underwood, who has done a review of the surface water um, drainage plan that was provided uh, to staff and we have some significant issues with that. In an already um, overwhelmed area, I'll call it, where the infrastructure is inadequate to deal with the current surface water runoff, um, the pilots farm there, they have independently undertaken significant efforts on their own farm to try and stave off some of the surface water drainage issues that are coming forward that ultimately go down to 32. In addition, what you will hear from some of the citizens this evening, this area 32 goes underwater. I think Ms. Bryant may have alluded to that in her question earlier. The pipes here are not adequate to accept this type of development. So if approved, what would happen is you're gonna put a development in an area where the offsite infrastructure can't take it. So all those folks off-site will be materially adversely affected. And we'll let Kenny Underwood talk to that, but you'll hear from some of those folks. One of the people I talked to that I wanted to make mention of specifically is Ms. Kathy Coble. She is the first house on Danny Road on the west side. She's been there since 1983, I think she said. And she, that drainage feature off of 32 comes onto her land and it crosses, goes under Danny Road. So she's got both of those pipes that impact her property. And for many, many years, the pipe at 32 was fine. Over the last 10 years, it has gotten to the point that the county has had to come out and do um, significant maintenance work on the open ditch because the scour was so bad that they had to put rock in it to try and slow it down. In the most recent heavy rain that she, she had, she said in the, the first time since 1983, it got within about 15 feet of her sidewalk. In addition, as it goes towards Danny Road, the drainage feature there can't handle the water and it is scouring to the point that it's eating out the underside of the road and I expect to have significant maintenance issues there. Specifically on the, uh, the wetland area, referred to on the west side of the project that's now been denominated as a singular lot 82 and um, we believe that to be technically improper because that is actually a jurisdictional wetland that runs almost two-thirds of the west line of this property you should only be a platted lot where you've got enough upland there to construct something in the future and if you look at that delineation i think you'll see that that if it's going to be part of a subdivision plat should be common area um, delivered to the, the unit owners within the subdivision, not a lot number, which will allow it to be sold and redeveloped in the future. Again, exacerbating and making more complicated the management of all the impacts of the development. And so I think you'll see what they've done here is kept it as a denominated lot number, which it should not be. Another, um, this is a technical legal issue. Pierce Road appears to be a prescriptive road. It is not currently a right of way that's wide enough to meet the county standards. I believe it's about 20 feet wide. They paved it after significant runoff of red clay kept going under 32. It kept washing out and going under 32 and headed towards the river. So they've paved it and so they don't have red clay runoff. But what you've got is a very narrow road, and you've got eight lots that that's your only access, and then you've got Wembley Road up the top. Now, the development package, as we read it, it appears that the developer is dedicating a 40-foot strip to widen that area 
to get to the width to meet the county standard, which as you all know, because we're in the ETJ, they've got to meet the county road standards or Fairhope, whichever is higher. In this instance, when you look at the package, there's no improvement of that road being required, which means when that road has to be improved, the developer is transferring that cost to the public, which ought not be allowed, certainly in this instance. You'll hear from some of the public this evening about the current condition of Pierce Road, um, which is unsuitable to accept that additional traffic burden. And specifically, we're referring to County Subdivision Regulation 5.57. Turning back to the, the drainage issue in this area, because this is the county, the civil law rule applies where you cannot alter the volume or channel or force increased velocity onto your neighbor. You don't have the legal right to do that. What a developer should do within their project is control that so that that both volume and flow is not altered because a developer does not have the legal right to do that without an easement from his neighbors to discharge an increased volume or channel or force that flow. And in this particular situation, it's even of greater concern where they amended their submissions to you and deleted, I believe it was 12 lots in a drainage pond. And now you have uncontrolled release out of the southwest corner of the property headed towards 32. That will exponentially increase that impact as well as without the legal right to do that. In sum, what will happen here um, ultimately if what the developer is asking for would get approved is they are transferring to the public ultimately the obligation and the cost to ultimately correct these drainage problems that are being increased by the project. And to give you an idea of what that looks like, what sits out in front of Jubilee Farms on Highway 181 was the result of unmanaged surface flow that was not taken into account during development of projects headed from the northwest to the southeast. And that's what it ultimately took in the public uh, tax dollar will ultimately bear that because it's got to be managed into the future. Let me ask you one question. You said that volume can't be increased um, in the county by a subdivision. In that case, how have we ever had a subdivision in the past 25 years? Every every subdivision I've ever seen built in the county um, with the exception of I can know one exception that Pat Shea did in Point Clear with that exception I don't know of a single subdivision ever done in Baldwin County that didn't increase volume on water flow when those challenges arise that comes under what's called the civil law rule that prohibits that increased volume volume or rate volume and rate you cannot increase a volume upon your neighbor nor can you channel it to increase velocity such that it would cause scour and so what you would have to do if you're following the technical civil law rule in developing your property with impervious surface is have large enough features that withhold that water or create enough impervious surfaces to allow dissipation of the water on your land is the, is the technical rule for that so has the county ever enforced that? We have had to have it judicially enforced. And we've represented people in those cases. Say that again. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how we've had a single subdivision yeah. built in Baldwin County it's in the past And is a point of clarification, is the, is the legal language that you're not allowed to increase volume and cause harm or increase volume, period? You technically are not allowed to increase volume or the velocity under the civil law rule. So, so Most, how, does the, how, how is a building permit ever uh, granted in the city of Fairhope? I mean, in, in the city of Fairhope or in the county, how is a building permit ever? Uh, I mean, when Mr. Pilot comes in and wants to build a 
you know, just a barn, how could he do that without increasing the volume on me who lives down Cowpen Creek? Because that well, 1,400, well, 1,400 square foot correctly. barn is going to increase the volume coming off his property going down Calpin Creek by me. Yeah. No, there's two so, answers. So how, how does yeah. he get a permit to do that? Yeah. Or anybody get a permit to do anything in Baldwin County? How does, I just the, don't county get a how does the county uh, uh, allow themselves to build a highway? Okay. Well, let me, I'm going to answer his question, then yeah, I'll come back fine. to you, Art. Okay. On your question about what happens in the city, in the city, the common law rule is exactly the opposite. This a municipal, um, jurisdiction is subject to what's called the common enemy doctrine and you can actually change flows as long as you don't cause damage that's the rule there in the county under the common law under this the rule I'm talking about you cannot increase the volumes or the velocities now your question as to what mr. pilot would do with his barn well, I'm just saying anybody when you you know sure. want to add on to your house and put a dog you know you want to put a dog pen in the back of your yard well, over sand you know that little dog kennel uh, you know 20 by 20 is going to increase the volume going off of your property well, into the road yes it is well, no, well not necessarily. if you mitigate There's places like, like uh, if you build on the Chesapeake Bay you're I, I understand that but I'm, I'm just saying I, I, and I've been to the Chesapeake Bay and, and I've okay. seen projects and, and we so had the my, one with pilot it, it doesn't have to because you can infiltrate or collect on site but I, I'm all saying the projects that go in front of us typically it does. there are about 20 projects that have been done in Baldwin County in the past 20 years that haven't violated that law. Okay. And I'm just wondering how, how that's Many the of them have violated it, Lee. I mean, every, every permit in out of the city limits. And many of them have violated it, which is part of the reason why we have problems now. But mm -hmm. one of the ways that, in the example you're talking about, so we can think that all the way out, one of which is what you use in your materials to allow on-site infiltration, what your sands are. Are you increasing flow? Where's that water going? What the pilots have done on their land is implement active stormwater management, even to control water that's not theirs to address it, and it has to be dealt with. Because otherwise, what you have is all that water's gonna go somewhere. I so, why yeah, I understand that I've done this 22 years and he's catching water and he's catching other people's water and he's slowing it down and I've seen this for years and years and years mm -hmm. but I'm just saying that a, a to the word following the law that you're stating nobody can build a house outside of the city limits from here on without having to do some type of major infiltration and if they're on land that's clay uh, with Adam not allowing them to put water down underground, uh, then there's no way to do it. But I won't get in. I'm is just that adjacent yeah. properties because I think that uh, we had this conversation. I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just saying there's stated this Lawrence Road. And, and, and I just don't know how how many of these ever been. Is absolutely right. Lawrence but anyway, Road. Same conversation. Lawrence Road. And that, we that, just that, had this conversation, we and did. I'm really curious about it because the, it's yeah. coming up. When are y'all talking at the time? Yeah. I have a hard the time. The conversation <laughs> there at least the the reviews where if this would be discharging into a right-of-way it doesn't meet that civil law this is that that was a conversation of private property to private property okay so my question is where I think Mike and I discussed you know where is this water drain is it directly onto private property or into a right-of-way if it's into a right-of-way then Baldwin County will be reviewing that it's their right-of-way so if it's county rule they will be doing that. So I want to back up for a second and talk about the reviews here. This is a planning jurisdiction case review for a subdivision. Baldwin County Highway Department has already preliminary reviewed this. They will be reviewing this in full at time of, a per they call it a permit. So there will be another review there. But if, if there's not prop water draining onto a prop from private property to private property, does the civil law apply? I'm just saying, you know, we, we want to in previous uh, I'm just saying you know at my hunting camp we built a couple of shooting houses or we had a shed on and the water goes right onto my neighbors sure. so yeah. I'm just saying any anything out in the country 90 percent of whatever's done doesn't meet that but go ahead I'm and, getting in and the weeds and we're spending too much time on this a, point, but a, a lot of those places may be so large that it infiltrates before it gets well, there but the, the main the main point that everybody's bubbling up about is that this is a different understanding of the law that we have been given 
to, you know, than has been explained to us thus far. It's been brought up twice recently, and I think it's really important for us to get very clear on. Well, and, and unfortunately, our legal counsel, our legal counsel is, is accusing himself. And, and our regulations are the as adverse effects. So if you determine that you believe there are adverse effects right. to properties, you may do something about that. You can require yeah. uh, a third-party review of drains, which we are prepared to do. You can require. Um, a change in the regulation yeah. or a change in the in the design you can deny you can hold off you have options of right. based on our regulations okay art to answer answer your question about the highway department yeah, they, we yeah, actually highway litigated department. with baldwin county over this over a drainage easement from a road improvement where they increased volume and velocity in their use of a drainage easement and we prevailed in that case under the they civil law route. They can't help but increase volume when you've wow. got impervious road surface and you've got ditches that discharge into, in, into wetlands, you can't help but increase. But what you've got to do when you're building that road is make sure that your drainage infrastructure manages that to allow dissipation as well as control and velocity. Show me one where they manage dissipation. Well, what they're trying to do right now is in front of Jubilee Farms, because if you look at the size of that ditch, it's got to keep water in it. Well, I, I, I look at County 13. There's a good example. Look at County 13 at Fly Creek. There's not really a dissipation there. I mean, everything from all of that massive flood water that comes off of the experiment station and Gaffer and everywhere else. It floods all over, they don't flood the houses, but keep people out of there because the, the flooding is so intense at the end of uh, Dyer. And then it goes across the uh, experiment station, across 13, across 104, and back across 13 into Fly Creek. No, when they built that, they did a great job building the bridge. They, they, they maintained uh, the uh, quality of water by, by uh, uh, preparing for any sedimentation. They reduced it down to nothing. But at the same time, they didn't, they didn't reduce the volume, the massive volume that, that they have created coming down into the Fly Creek watershed. Yeah. So, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I'd have to see it in, because it's, that's contrary to everything that, that I have ever, ever uh, been told or been involved in. I'll well, shoot we, an email. Yeah, yeah, shoot, me a, shoot me yeah, a text yeah, yeah. in the weeks. All right. Let's Thank you. Mr. Yes, President, I want to say something. So we just had this conversation, and I, I, I'm, I'm, we just had this conversation about the Lawrence project on Lawrence Road about volume coming into people's backyards. Yeah, our rate says volume um, can't be increased, but doesn't yeah. doesn't say that the excuse me. Our says regulation the says the rate. Whatever I say, do the, think the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> our uh, regulation says that the rate cannot be increased, but is silent on the volume. Rate well. City. Yeah, the city, but what I'm saying is w when it adversely affects someone, that's when we start perking our ears as far as volume directly. Um, and we just did that. We set that precedent on the Lawrence case. Well, the Lawrence Road case didn't get, um, it got denied due to green space, not well, water. Health and safety, actually. Th there were, was, there was, were a few things. So yeah. the... Um, I mean, the a main little bit about this law that, that is, we're talking about. It is a hard law for a planning commission to enforce because it is based on those damages. That's when it's litigated. So talk, typically that is resolved in a court. You know, I, I would suggest is it meeting our regulations to use that as the litmus test. I, I think so, and I think we can get our legal representation to look at our regulations and advise us on that. Not about this because he had to recuse himself but going forward since this is starting to be brought up which is you know after 20 something years this last two meetings is the first time that i've heard this and now that this is being brought up i think we probably need our council to give us a statement um on that going forward so if, if you do believe that it, the what is done is inadequate we can certainly you've got options and and again i want to preface this by saying we, we are prepared to do a third party review. We did not have time when we got these comments in last week. You saw them in your packet. We are prepared to do that and send that out. I, I have a question. Uh, 
well, I'll try not to get the weeds about my one statement before the question is I think it's great that this is coming up and that we're addressing volume and there are parts of the country that ha address volume and they, they still have development. So it's, it's, I'm not saying we can. I'm just I, saying I I'm just, the, that the county does not. I know. So if we're going to all of a sudden deny this, I hear, I hear then I think then when she comes in and tries to get a building permit up at her hunting camp, she should be denied, I, and I should be denied when I try to go, I you know, it's build a, fair, a house it's next a door to my point. parents on the we're bay. Being and, asked to and change I'm our, just saying that it's a different that, that you know, 75 percent of everything in the county needs to be denied from here on out. I, I get well, that. So I have a question, um, which is. Where are we discharged? I mean, where is the damage from the discharge from this property? And what I'll do so as not to take up too much time is let Kenny Underwood speak to that because he will address material adverse effects, which I think is what you're going towards, which gets to the point. But And I'll close with this, Lee, and I, I think this point is, it's not that every permit should be denied, but volume has to be dealt with, either in your natural site characteristics or in some artificial improvement that you um, are obligated to build in addition to whatever else you're doing if you're going to change flow and velocity onto your neighbor. Yeah, we, we looked at this when we did the LID a number of years ago, the first go round, and we found it, and that's why I bring this up, we found it, you know, in 70% of our soils utterly impossible to not increase volume. But um, is, it, is it strictly volume or the rate of both. volume she really? Said, she, said volume. she said velocity both. and volume. Both. both. No, there's, there's a tremendous difference there. <laughs> Over an hour, the amount of volume can certainly <laughs> increase, but the rate doesn't necessarily have to have to increase depending on what you're holding and when you're releasing it. That's so, but I'm putting more volume down there, but I'm not increasing the rate, which then reduces the scour that I think you're re you're referring to in terms of damage. But it doesn't it doesn't re reduce it it doesn't increase the scour just because you're increasing the volume. You are not you are not under the civil law rule. You can't dump more water on me as your downstream neighbor. I have always, in, in all uh, the courses hey, that hey. I've done, it's always been hey, your, your neighbor has got to accept, for within reason, yeah. water from the uphill side. Under Art. the common enemy doctrine, that's right, in the city. Hey, Art, we'll get Chris to do a report. Not a specific. Uh, well, wait a minute. Before we'll we get Chris to do it, we won't get I'm Chris like, to do it. We'll you get, get that, but we'll get why someone. is Chris not in here? We won't get Chris he to do it. Because he recused himself. He's got a he conflict. He's got okay, a then, then the question is, is Chris able no to I'm not give saying the I'm not saying with this specific we will uh, application but I'm saying we've had this come up with two applications that's right so I would like him to take I'm just going to ask Chris to take the doctrine that she mentioned and compare it to our uh, subdivision regulations and make sure that our subdivision regulations are legal so what I'm going to ask him to do so are we, we tabling it? Yeah, we'll. Yeah. No, we're just, uh, all right. We've got um, yeah, Penny here. Underwood <laughs> and Gina Todi. Is that okay if they come yeah. up next? And can they specifically address what Hunter brought up, which is uh, any stormwater impacts that are not just on the right of way, but on a neighboring? How it would impact neighbors? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon or evening. I'm Ken Underwood. I'm a race professional engineer for 45 plus years. I live at 147-15 Oak Street in Magnolia Springs. I lived there since 1969. And over the course of the last three months or so, I have had the opportunity to review three different submittals of stormwater management analysis for Lone Oak Farms. Accompanying this document were drawings. The first, and I, I worked up two, two previous little report, short reports after I analyzed the, the, the data and, and the drawings that were presented here. In the first one, I think the report was uh, April 20th, uh, there were 94 lots, two stormwater detention ponds, 
And in, the, in that, that first edition, uh, there was a table. Hey, Mr. Underwood, since we're really busy and we're spending a lot of time on this and we have more professionals coming, could we just focus on what Trey has presented tonight? And the and yeah. and and the, you know, and, and whatever you consider yeah. the areas that it doesn't meet the subdivision regulations or areas that you feel like it'll, you know, hurt, you know, hum, you know, what is it, you know, hurt, hurt uh, yeah. health, safety, and welfare because we don't need to go back to yeah. the well, 94 yeah. unit if it's not. Yeah, if it's the, not the, what we're this, this at. has to do with with the changes that have occurred in the project going from 94. To 82, and then to 82 with one detention pond. The the tables that were presented in all three sets of the documents were the same, unchanged. The stormwater detention, a stormwater discharge from the site, remained unchanged at the four locations given in this uh, document. The the changes that have occurred, of course, we've talked about going from 94 to 82 or possibly 81 lots. Uh, the problems that, that, that I see occurring here is that the south outfall is, is labeled in the, in the uh, uh, stormwater management analysis, uh, discharges under County Road 32 to the south. Uh, it, there, the stormwater detention pond has been eliminated. So all that stormwater running off the project there is discharged down in that southwest corner has had no treatment whatsoever, no, no stormwater retention, detention, or attenuation of, of, of total discharge rate. That was in the southwest corner. The southeast now, outfall. Now, um, I, I thought that Trace said that, the, that there'd be less water going to the south. Do you disagree with that? I, have, I didn't see any calculations whatsoever in any submittals that uh, would lead me to, to have an opinion on that. It's just that whatever water is going from the west side of the property, the wetland area that got down around Pierce Road and the area in the southwest corner is being discharged near where a wetland area is and there's no attenuation whatsoever there. Uh, so I haven't seen any updated calculations that would lead me to think that there there is actual reduction there. Then the southeast outfall discharges to County Road 32 basically. No flow attenuation there. I mean it's just stormwater runs off and it, it winds up in a ditch on the north side of 32. The east outfall area. This is an area that is uh, just a couple of hundred feet north of 32. Outfalls and it flows over private property to the east. Sheet flow. Uh, it happens to be that on that private property on the east side there is a Grady Pond. I, if you're familiar with the Grady Pond, it's a naturally occurring pond. It has no outlet. This is on private property. There's additional flow that's going to, in a total volume, that's going to wind up in that pond. If I happened on that pond, I would be concerned about the increased flood, flood you know, ponding levels in that pond. The northeast outfall is the, the detention pond there in the northeast corner. And uh, the best I can tell from the most recent drawing depicting that stormwater detention pond versus some of the other earlier additions, I don't think there's been any appreciable change in the total pond volume area. Uh, and this pond goes through, you know, the stormwater detention pond. It is also has a retention capability. It discharges into a, another wetland area, the Grady Pond delineated uh, wetland area that has no outlet, no de defined outlet according to the Baldwin County GIS survey. So pond levels in that, on that private property, is also going to be increased. The I guess the, in one thing that uh, I looked at at the report and a total of the property itself is 57.72 acres. That, that's in the report. 
uh, that I was able to determine in one of their drawings that here on the north side there's like, like three acres that actually drain from the, from the north to the south onto this particular property. So that gets us up to 60.75 acres of stormwater that's areas that generate stormwater on this property. And in the report, a total of uh, the four outfalls address on a total of 51.35 acres. So there are 9.4 acres that contribute stormwater that flows onto or across this property that have not been considered in this report. And uh, in my professional opinion, every acre that's contributing stormwater runoff onto this property, there needs to be an accounting. The top volume, pre, the volume, post. And uh, that there's 9.4 acres that's not been accounted for. And also I learned that uh, on the um, south side of 32, there, there's some issues there with people with you know, flooding and erosion problems. Uh, there's, and those are, have not been addressed. Well, and, well, wait, wait. How can there be, are you saying there's problems on the south side of 32? There, but it, you're not saying that it's a result of this development because there's no development. Right. It, 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 they're the existing problems. They're existing problems. Yeah. Where those problems come from? They, they, <laughs> I guess we just didn't do a very good uh, job of accounting uh, up until now. In, on, with the county wise and, and uh, in, in any uh, your previous development. Well, it's kind uh, of a catch 22 because you're having troubles on the south of, you know, we're having troubles on the south of 32, and then the pipes going under 32 to the south are undersized. Mm -hmm. And if you open those pipes, then you're going to have more troubles. You know, after, after the county went about, I guess it was about five years ago, the county went and cleared out every single pipe underneath the road. Uh, up and down 32, 104, 33, all those roads. Yeah. And we, about four days later, had a three inch rain. And I was sitting with my son, who's got great eyes and great ears in my living room. And he said, Dad, the creek's flooding. And I says, No way, it never floods on a three inch rain. And the lake at Fairfield subdivision mm -hmm. was low today. And he says, No, I hear the creek flooding. I opened the door, and sure enough, it's flooding. Um, of course, it only took about three or four rains for logs and debris to get stuck back in them and kind of work as ad hoc, you know, retention ponds. But, but that's an issue there that those people in the south are going to have because, yeah. you know, at mm -hmm. some point if they ever do open those up, then, you know, those things now are almost working as ad hoc, you know, <laughs> water, yeah. uh, you know, slow down devices. Yeah. Well, I, I mentioned that to, to the, the any additional total volume that we're, we're going to be discharged. This project with discharge to the south is only going to exacerbate existing problems. Flooding over top in 32, and if the, the culvert is enlarged, then the additional problem down there. From uh, Baldwin County subdivision regs, uh, paragraph 5.11.2 drainage system standards. This is when a proposed new drainage system will divert water onto an unnatural water system or onto private land adjacent to the subdivision, drainage rights must be secured by the applicant and indicated on the final plat. And I haven't seen any indication of any flowage well, easement or, or- For the record, this is Fairhope's planning commission that goes off of Fairhope subdivision regulations, not Baldwin County's. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm well aware of that. Okay. So and, but that, and, but and, that but, also does still say private property. The streets yeah. are public. That's, so yeah, I'm trying to discharging clarify, the, the, one of the neighbors Wayne Calvo wrote a letter saying, I'm trying to figure out what floods, wrote a letter saying that it's 32 does not flood, but Pierce Road, the does. wetlands back up and flood and, and flood over Pierce Road. So you can't get out of Pierce Road onto 32. That, that would be the culverts just north of 32 under Pierce Road would carry the flow from the west side to the east side. Then it flows under the culvert uh, under 32 under that, that culvert. It just east of the uh, Pierce Road intersection. Is the uh, covered under 32 that drains from this property undersized? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I didn't do any analysis of that, didn't check. Uh, 
Because uh, because it, it, it's very obvious that if you've got, it's kind of like building bridges. If you don't, if you uh, narrow your bridge by building the causeway up to the bridge and you narrow what should be a thousand foot wide bridge down to a hundred feet, as you well know, what you've got is a stove pipe effect. Yeah. And the small culvert is going to have a velocity, regardless of the amount of water. It's going to have a velocity like a daggum fire hose. Yeah, it, it's a... Uh that that you know problem needs to be addressed and i think some of the you know people here that that live in the area can address a, the you know, a, a, you know, potential flooding over pierce road and the actual flooding over pierce road and county road 32. okay all right thank you sir thank you. anybody else wish to speak to this item Good afternoon. I'm Gina Todia with Wetland Resources Environmental Consulting. I live at 11100 Lawrence Road Extension in Fairhope. Uh, I've been asked to take a look at this project as far as the wetlands are concerned. And I did submit uh, a letter to Hunter Simmons, and I think it's in your, your press packet. Uh, the points I wanted to make, and this is stuff you're probably already aware of, but in the city subdivision regulations, Article 4, Section E, lot standards uh, under building areas, Part D, it says where a parcel of land proposed to be subdivided contains an area of wetlands delineated as jurisdictional by the Corps of Engineers, said area shall be subject to Section 404B1 guidelines, which means you have to demonstrate avoidance and minimization of wetland impacts. Um, Concerning fill material into wetlands, lots may be platted where sufficient upland area exists to provide a building area for the principal structure and necessary accessory structures. Fill may be used where necessary to provide access to lots where approval for fill has been granted by the Corps and any other applicable government agency. So, <clears throat> in other words, you can't plat lots where there's not enough buildable upland area. You can, however, cross wetlands and or streams to reach buildable upland area and any permitted wetland field has to be mitigated um, so what I'm thinking about is the long linear wetland area on the west side of the property that we've all been talking about uh, lot number I, 82, yeah. excuse me that's lot 82 yes yes labeled as lot 82 so my recommendation was you know just call this a common area and take future development off the table and I actually checked with uh, Mary Booth, who's the reviewer with Baldwin County today, and she said that is what the Highway Department and the Planning and Zoning Commission are going to require, is that that area be designated as common area, so that may be a moot mo point here tonight, but um, just wanted to reemphasize that and then just answer any questions you might have as far as wetlands and the wetland regulatory program or process. questions well you go get off easy huh <laughs> get off easy. well and then just a couple of other comments just as a citizen um, I, I don't think it's right to put the financial burden of improving Pierce Road on the citizens or the future burden of building sidewalks um, you may recall we've just been through a zoning process or we're right near the end of a zoning process and Planning District 37 uh, that includes the Lawrence Road project and we're very very close to the end but we we've got actually got uh, something in our local provisions requiring that sidewalks go ahead and be built even if they're out there in the middle of nowhere right now we it's amazing how fast the middle of nowhere becomes somewhere that's right that's absolutely right I mean right. look at yep. Highway 104 you know yep. five years ago somebody would have laughed at you suggesting or maybe six <laughs> putting a sidewalk out there and now you've got the McGill and everything else. Yep. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that there has been, just talking to my contacts, there's, there's been, there's a lot of interest right now, I'm going to preempt your comments, in getting zoning in what is the rest of District 14 that includes this area. I know that's not going to impact this project unless it does get denied. Um, 
but I think they're about to start that process for this district and maybe another one or two. So. How many years has it been? <laughs> since <coughs> District 14. Yeah, how many years has it been since zoning's been available? Oh, yeah. I need to yeah. remind us of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Um, anybody else wish to speak to this item? I'm Fred Pierce, the Pierce that lives on Pierce Road still, um, <laughs> 17991 Pierce Road. I've lived there my entire life, as my father and my grandfather has before, so we're about 100 years on that road. Um, I grew up having to almost swim to the school bus. That's how bad it flooded on Pierce Road at the time. Um, I did a little homework for you guys. I used to farm. We farmed until 87. We shut it down. And in 1991, my dad passed away. 50 years old, young, but we farmed the Grant property at one time. It was probably one of the most horrible pieces of property we ever farmed. It was not easy to get the crops out of. Sometimes you'll sink your tractors. We only farmed it maybe a year, maybe two, if that. We stopped. Then after that, uh, Boyd Little with Oak Hollow Farms farmed it for a short period of time and then he quit. So that has nothing really to do with this. It just kind of gives you a history of what's going on with this property because I've been there since I was a toddler. Um, I did bring some pictures. I took current shots. These are recent, and I have them for you guys. Um, I'll pass it up to you. Um, I know a traffic study's been done, but this was actually a cell phone picture February, February 22nd at um, 748 a.m. with the school. Everybody going to Newton School. That picture, as far as you can see the headlights, goes all the way to almost Highway 33. That's me trying to turn on the Pierce Road. Um, I mean, if you're going to allow a subdivision, I, you know, the only other light that's even there is on Highway 9 or Highway 32. 80, 82 houses, 85 houses, quick math, two people leaving out of there. They're going to have maybe two kids with driver's license you're gonna put 300 to 400 cars on Pierce Road and on Highway 32. Um, I'll give you another nice picture. Um, Mr. Carbo, who's here tonight, he's the one who sent the letter in. And what he didn't know is I was tailgating his truck when he was leaving Pierce Road. Um, and the reason is, because I said, well, how, how would you know what's going on there unless you actually got to see Pierce Road and see how bad this is? Um, this picture, there's two pictures actually. One where I was following him on Highway 30 on, on Pierce Road leaving, and he's taking up too much road. There's no way you can pass him. You'll see in the picture. Then when I hit Highway 32 and start heading east, I'm behind him on 32. Look at the difference between how much room he has on Pierce Road and how much room he has on 32. Also, I circled the area on Pierce Road. There's two foot on Pierce Road on the right and left side of the road itself that's starting to pit out. It's not going to be any good, and you're going to dump 400 cars on that road. Yeah. Pass it down to Art, and then it'll just come sure. on away. That'll be great. Thank you, Fred. You're getting the exercise today. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. I certainly need it. Now, I don't know um, on the computer if you can pull up where it shows the plaque of the property. Is it something you can do? That's perfect right there. All right. Um, in the blue area, the very front where it shows Highway 32, you see the little um, spot that is uh, squared out with a house right there on 32. The fellow that lives in a house, so unfortunately he's not here, he is the grandson of Mr. Grant. Um, he's taking provisions on his own because he knows it's going to flood. He's built a two-foot, three-foot berm all the way around his house. And this was taken today at about 3 o'clock. What that shows is the two 
two and a half to three foot berm in a U shape all the way around behind his property because he knows it's going to flood. Um, that's one reason that um, I think this project should be denied is just the water flow, the amount of traffic you're going to dump on 32, the amount of traffic you're going to dump on Pierce Road, and the uh, infamous uh, culvert we're talking about. Here's a picture of it. I wish that picture was a little clearer, but you can see there's a slope to the land right there. That's taken from this man's driveway. Um, I stood in his driveway, took a picture of the culvert. The culvert is located right here where this, uh, where the mouse is located. So you can kind of see where that's at. And um, I live way back on this section over here. All this was pretty much destroyed by Hurricane Sally. And these were all pines. Um, every one of the neighbors around this property are sitting here tonight. My neighbors, everybody that lives on Pierce Road, they're sitting here in this room tonight. Um, all of us are concerned with how much water is going to dump over it. Um, Mr. Hartshorn, he's sitting right over here by himself. Water is going to dump onto his farmland. If he's renting it, there's loss of revenue there because if a farmer can't farm it, how can he collect rent on that? All these things are falling into effect. I don't think it's been really looked at closely of what kind of impact it's going to have on everybody around this property. Um, my main concern is just the traffic. I mean, if you're going to if you're going to bring this into the area, fine, bring these houses in. Widen Pierce Road where we can actually drive up and down it because you're dumping eight cars onto Pierce Road. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I want to be looking at a semi truck in my rear view mirror coming down Pierce Road when I'm backing out onto it. That's a hazard alone with eight cars backing onto Pierce Road alone. On 32, how are people going to get out? How are you going to get out a big truck like Mr. Carbo's an 18 wheeler out on that road without a light? Danny Road dumps onto it, Pierce Road dumps on it. I took my time and went and visited all these neighbors, knocked on their doors, including across from Highway 32. The poor little lady that lives there is widowed, lives in that one house. This culvert, all this drainage is going to go right into her yard. And she sits up pretty high. Not only that, it's going to cross over Danny Road in a culvert about the same size onto Mr. Estes' land all the way over there. Now, currently, with no houses there, the water sits. It evaporates, not a big problem. Some of it runs over there. And Mr. Pilot did an excellent job straightening out the east side of that because forever it was nothing but a river. But the land was lower. But he's cleaned it up to where the east side runs fairly good. But you start dumping this water over there, all things are going to change. Is and Mr. Pilot on the east or the west side? He's on the east side. Okay. So when you look at this, this is. On the west side. I'm sorry. He's on the west. He's on the west. I'm looking at it differently. Okay. This is Mr. Pilot's right here where you see the mark at, okay. where the Pierce Road is written on this map. The church, which is located right on the corner, my grandfather helped build this church. It's a little white church on the corner. <coughs> this drainage right here is inadequate to handle all that. Those are little small culverts here, and it takes a 90-degree angle and shoots right across. So I think every one of your citizens in this area are all concerned about stormwater runoff and the traffic issues. And my fear is that if you're not careful, somebody's going to kill killed out there if you're not watching this traffic. Yeah, it won't be the first time. No, and it's scary as hell. Danny it could Rose be your kid, little... it could be my kid, or some kid from the subdivision. Yeah. You know, so that's all I had to say, but I wanted you guys to see what the real picture is of what's going on the land out there. So like I said, with my recommendation, I would really like to see this project scrapped yeah. just on these issues. All right. Thank you. Man. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Pierce Road and Danny Road right there. Right more, I've seen more accidents there than just about anywhere. Anyway, all right. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? So. And we, we've been spending a lot of time. So if, if somebody's already said what you've got to say, uh, we already heard it. So if you got anything new to offer, please do. And I don't mean that really to you specifically, but I'm saying to anybody in the audience. Um, if you've got anything new to say, uh, please add it. Otherwise, we, we've heard the 
concerns about Lot 82, the water toward 32, the Pierce Road quality, uh, acreage, and the runoff. So anyway, yes, sir. Hi, my name is Herb McKee. Yes, I live at 211 Park Drive in Fairhope, but my property is just east of this, mine and uh, Mr. Harthorne's property. Mm -hmm. We have row crops there. Uh, we lease out that property to Artie Frigo, the farmer. And uh, that land in there, I don't know if you know about this, but one of the reasons I bought that property in there initially, many years ago, was because it's Marlboro loam. Marlboro loam doesn't hurt really well. Unlike just east of us toward the river, you get more of a clay and sandy soil, and it hurts pretty well. But this ground does not. It's um, probably pretty close to being wetlands in and of itself. And with about three inches of rain, uh, I can hardly turn in the driveway coming off of 32 into my property at 11193. It's, it's floods. That, that culvert, that whole ditch, it just floods over. You can't even see where the driveway is at that point. It does go south uh, across the road to Miss Bishop's property that was been alluded to earlier. Uh, and with this additional runoff, we're concerned about um, how, how poorly that will happen. The, the drainage pond, they were, the pond here they talked about on Mr. Harthorne's uh, property would flood. Um, it would come down through my property as well. Um, I'm very concerned about that. So the Marlboro loam, again, is, is not a, a ground that uh, is great for farming in some sense, but is, um, sometimes that's even a problem. Um, Mr. Buddy Street, who's one of the farmers in the area, uh, who farms some of this marble along. When we had three inches of rain and he had his corn crops to get out, I said, Buddy, I don't think you can get that corn out of there, can't you? I guess you can't get in the field. He said, oh yeah, we can get in the field just fine. We just can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, it was, it's, that's the way it is. You get, I'm stuck my Massey Ferguson down in that property because it is so boggy. It's hard as brick when it's dry, but when it rains, you have to have some boots on and you can get stuck. In fact, I helped get my neighbor and grandkids out of the ground out there because it just sinks. It doesn't hold water well. The other concern I had, and I'll make this brief, is to do with the traffic there uh, coming down 32. Um, 104 and Highway 98 uh, for Summerdale and Folding Points Beyond. Uh, for emergency traffic coming down through there, they use 32 almost uh, nearly exclusively. I'm out there working just about every day of the week in my, my farm there, and um, I can hear the sirens come down through there. And I take the opportunity to stop and pray for them uh, because, you know, you don't know who's in there. It'd be somebody's grandparents, their mom, their dad, uh, their children. Uh, we, we seldom think about that, you know, about the people who are in those ambulances. But I can tell you, having worked pathology in hospitals, every minute counts when you're uh, in the back of that ambulance. It counts. Um, if we dump all these numbers of cars from 80 houses back in there onto 32, which is already congested, I mean, I can hardly get a tractor from my property across the road to Miss Bishop's property where I do some gardening back there. I have to wait and wait and wait just for the traffic. I know we did a traffic survey on this, but now you've got that straight shot, which is why emergency traffic loves it, because there's only a four-way stop and a, and a red light. Now we've got that roundabout that's being built, it won't happen until October uh, before that's finished, and all the school traffic, which is gonna come in in August, is gonna, it's already congested now with school traffic, but when it comes in, it's gonna be worse. When you dump 80 uh, houses with traffic, at least 160 cars, plus their kids, they gotta have cars out of those little roads, um, I would respectfully submit that uh, you consider denying this project. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. All right, I'll let one more person speak and then we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. My name's Linda, oh, I'm tall. <laughs> Linda Lou Parsons, 16825 Old Pierce Road. You've heard about Pierce, but hell, Old Pierce is across the street, but um, not directly. You know, Danny comes across, y'all all know that. And then there's JB Lane, which is cul-de-sac, and then there's Old Pierce Road. And y'all have been talking about the culvert, but there's more than just that one culvert. There's some natural ones. This is, I know y'all have probably seen this before, so I won't, it's a 20-year 
topograph of that area that all the cities put together 20 years ago to try to help the county figure out how to do it. And you see how it all runs this way and hits between Pierce, and I'm gonna say Pierce and Danny, JB and Old Pierce. And I happen to be, since 2002, a proud owner of two acres on Old Pierce Road. And um, I'm 72 feet above the flood zone, never needed flood insurance. Then there's been all the growth where you, they're talking about and above it, just like you're talking about cow pen coming down. <clears throat> With the hurricane, I actually had the water come by, between JB and Danny. There's a natural kind of dry, it's only about this deep and it has grass, but when it rains, since all the development and you take this neighborhood, even since Sally with the trees coming up, I flooded and I've never flooded. And we had it in our thousand square foot shop, didn't have insurance, but then it also came in a den and I had to raise that four inches. I spent a year and a half fixing that. But I'm more concerned about, you're talking about red, there's red water that comes down Old Pierce and it's, um, since I've been there, it was <coughs> eight feet deep, the ditch. Now it's four feet. So they did come out after going and visiting with the county and do that, but it comes down and the first house that faces 32 on Old Pierce, it flooded. The next two flooded with that little creek coming under. It's not even a culvert. And then my water came from the backside, from the water coming between Danny and JB. But it's just, I'm very concerned for the people in Danny, Pierce, Old Pierce, and you know, it goes under Old Pierce and continues down to Fish River. And on both sides of the streets, if you watch it, I just feel like it'll be, I would like to see that denied. The way the water comes, there's nothing to hold it. I mean, you're talking about building a culvert. You can't build something big enough for all that water. And Art's talking about velocity. I couldn't walk in it when I, I have videos, but I didn't know how to give it to you. I have videos and pictures of the water and the way it came and the flow, but I, I was like this trying to film it. And I have films from November, from September, from November to December, and even currently. So I know your time's precious. I thank you for it. If you have any questions for me, just ask. Otherwise, I'll take my seat. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing at this time. Um, and uh, Trey, you heard a lot of the comments. Um, I wrote down, you know, obviously a lot of people are concerned about the water, the safety driving, um, the 9.4 acres not being taken into account, uh, Pierce Road quality, and then why is lot 82 uh, left out separate, not part of the common areas? Thank you, sir. Um, heard a lot of familiar comments, heard a lot of new ones. Um, and I want to thank uh, the review that was presented on there and, and um, the data is in the reports. It's there black and white. And I spoke to it high level earlier, but I'll go into a little bit more deeper detail now. Um, Pierce Road is, is not a dedicated right away. It's a prescriptive with the county. It's county's jurisdiction. Part of the process in here is we've met with the county. The county requires our project to dedicate right away in there. It originally was going to be a 20-foot right away dedication in there, but it's since been converted to a 40-foot right away dedication in there. Um, when you say a 40-foot right of way, what, what does that mean? That means we're dedicating 40 feet on the side. Normally you would dedicate- Is that from to, the center line of what's currently- Normally the you would go to the center line of the road and we would dedicate 
20 or 25 or whatever it took to get to a standard 50 or 60 foot right of way in there. Mm -hmm. In this situation, the prescriptive right of way based on our deed went on the other side of the right of way. So in order to get the center line of the road, we had to give another 15 feet on the other side of the road. So normally you go down the center line of the road, I give 25, the guy to the west gives 25, and then you get your 50 foot right of way. Right. In this situation, our property line actually went over the center line of the road and the road was fully in this piece of property here. So we have to give even more. So that's why it's giving 40 feet and not um, a 25 or, or a 30 that you're more standardly here. Um, the project is, that road is in county's jurisdiction. Um, there are county permits that are required to make connections to that and that process will be handled via the county. And so any improvements that are required in that road is handled in that jurisdiction. We've made those submittals and that process will be handled um, accordingly. There was a lot of talk about drainage. Um, I mentioned it earlier that the west side of the site has roughly a we studied a 200 acre drainage basin in there. Um, our site going into 32 is roughly 20 acres via the 10% that we're, that we're trying to target for our downstream analysis. Your subdivision regulations takes into account downstream um, uh, damages. You're, you're looking to make sure that your, your projects that come before you don't impact downstream damages. And so you do that by your regulations stating that you have to do what they call the 10% rule. We have to do a hydrologic model of that whole basin in there. And so that's what we've done. Um, you asked the question, are we reducing flows going to that culvert in there? And I didn't have the data in front of me. Um, but to answer your question, yes. The volume that's going to South Pierce after this project's over with, the pre-development volume going there was a little over 20 acres of flow, 20 acre feet of storage volume flowing that direction. When our project's constructed, that same direction is only 11.6 acre feet. So we're cutting the flow volume in half going toward Pierce Road. Are you taking it to the east? The taking it to the east into that larger pond over there. Um, the flow that's going in that direction, like I said, we're only 20 acres of that 200 acre basin in there. Predominantly the water, as it's mentioned, overtops Pierce Road. That water's coming from the west onto the, from the pilot's farm and then via properties upstream in there. So it's coming from properties upstream across the pilot's farm, down Pierce Road, Pierce Road floods, it hits County Road 32, goes under 32 and makes its way south toward Fish River. We are a 20 acre component of that. And we are doing what we can to reduce the flows by those numbers um, in that direction. The property draining towards the east is going into a large wet pond, which is Part of your regulations have to do um, suspended solids reductions, and a wet pond is one of the one of the uh, the design criteria that meets that 80% uh, TSS reduction. We, re we release via, and I know I'm probably getting in the weeds in this, but it seems like we may need to get in the weeds in this. We release via a level spreader, which level spreaders do is it dissipates energy so that you don't have. Um, damaging flows going off off site and so you try to release the water in the same magnitude that it's coming onto the neighboring property Let's take it step one step further our property doesn't release onto the neighboring property it's releasing into a wetland a jurisdictional waters of the u.s which is on our site that waters of the u.s wetland area that we're releasing into and the right-of-way dedication out there that we're dedicating to are the missing nine acres that are not in the routing calculations that county's property u.s's property we're not fooling with that. We're not disturbing that in there. So that's outside of our, our it's not going into our pond. We're passing in that direction. That's why there's a gap in the numbers in there. It's, it's called out, the diagrams show it. Um, you can see that information there. Um, you know, they, they talked about safety and traffic and things in there. There's also a safety and fire protection out there. The Indian's water main that's in, on site out there is, we flowed it. We actually had pretty good flow numbers in there, but it's an older class plastic pipe in there. And so the reason that the city is requiring us to upgrade this is because you don't have fire protection. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a reliable water system. There's a lot of breaks on this line in there. And so it's continuously having to be maintained and it's not dependable. So in order for our project to be, to be approved through the Fairhope Utilities, we're having to install a 12 inch ductile iron line which puts in the redundancy to, to help with the life safety in that area in there. So I wanted to mention that um, it's a little bit different at spin on it, but at the same time, it's, a, it's, an, important, it's an important caveat there. Um, lot 82 um, is, I don't have the acreage in front of me, but it's probably 
It's between five and ten acres big. It's sizable. You could build a large house in there with a permit from the Corps. Now you got to get permits like you would anywhere else, but we're not we're not doing anything in that lot in those wetlands. We got the buffers up there, part of the subdivision regulations. We're protecting those areas as required by the regulations. But if somebody wanted to build a house on that property, there's plenty of space to develop that lot. It's huge. So to say that it's not developable is not an accurate statement. You can buy and sell wetland areas, properties with wetlands on there that happens all day long. Um, we don't see a reason why that couldn't happen on this lot right here. Um, the city's asked us to take off the future development phase in there because we understand that by, uh, your, your approval of this project doesn't guarantee any future development. Where we're at this point, we're not asking for any future development in there. We just simply don't need to put it in common area. I've got twice as much, nearly twice as much open space as I need. I don't need any more. And so why not put that, that, that lot into commerce? It's got plenty of space that you can develop it. If they want to go in there and get a permit with a core to put a house in there, to put a bridge in there, put a bottomless culvert, there's a lot of things you can do to cross those wetlands that are environmentally sensitive. And so if they want to do that, whoever buys that over there, that's an that's a opportunity that can be, can be um, retained. And so that would be my response to the, the lot 82 um, comment. Um, but I feel like, you know, we've got a project that meets your regulations. Um, I have been here for a very long time myself, and I take your regulations very seriously. Um, I try to not only just meet them, but I try to exceed them. So if you have any questions or comments, I'm glad to address those. Thank you. Um, would there be any kind of a deed restriction on 82? Because we've had a lot of subdivisions like this with parcels left out, and then somebody buys it, and all of a sudden we have a family subdivision come in with, you know, wanting this made into four lots. Um, would y'all put any kind of a deed restriction on that? Yeah, I would, I'm not, I'm not in the position to agree to that, but if that's something that you request, then I, you know, we have to, we have to listen to your, your request. Commissioner, any questions for Trey? Mm -mm. Um, I've got one question. That, um, a lot of people ask about the, uh, comment on the quality of Pierce Road. And I see where y'all have, you know, your your um, street, um, Tipkin Street, uh, comes into 32, and, and ultimately most of the lots are uh, accessed, you would assume, by it. Uh, and then Pierce Road comes in, I'd assume, lots 1 through 8, and maybe even 9, 10, 11, 12, 67 might use Pierce Road. Um, are you all looking, I mean, I understand that you're dedicating uh, 40 feet of right-of-way to take that from a, a you know, prescriptive right-of-way to an actual right-of-way by the county. Are you all looking at doing any improvements on, on, on That Pierce would Road? be um, if directed by the county to make those improvements. So as we pull our permits for our access, for our, our subdivision access and our shared driveway access is in there, if the county requires that, then yes, we will have to do it. But that's a, uh, a directive via the county. It would, it's their road. At this point, we're not, but we haven't been asked to either. Uh, any other questions for Trey? Trey you see any, the, salt, excuse me. Go ahead. the sidewalks came up, Trey. Are y'all adding or thinking about the schools, the kids, sidewalks? Well, we have sidewalks in our development. I yeah. think it's just the request down Pierce Road and then down uh, in front of on 32 right there. You know, it's just you know, okay. predominantly Pierce Road is lot 82, and it's it's all wetlands down that side, and so we're not looking to put sidewalks down there, and then so it would be left with a short section out there in the front, and so we're looking at putting an easement in there so that sidewalks can go in there. But that's a very short section, but sidewalks are going in the neighborhood. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good question, because that prompted another one for me. I had one, but. Um, is the county um, at this point in time allowing you to put sidewalks within the right of ways of your Pitkin, or are they making you put those on easements? I'm not going to speak wrong. Okay. But, and like I said, there is a review there from the county following up, and, and I think if that's something you want to look at, making a recommendation, like we typically do with city council, if you want to make a recommendation to Baldwin County, we can certainly facilitate that as well whether it's improvements to the road or, or anything else. Um, did you foresee any problems with getting the drainage that Mike highlighted into the common area? The drain? Oh, yes. No, we did do that, yes. 
Okay. No, we've already done. We've already that was that comment, um, and then there was one other comment about taking the note off. We've already addressed that. That was a comment that we received from the county, and we've addressed that as well. Okay. Good. Can we have to any further questions? All right. Thank you, Trey. Thank you. All right, commissioners. Any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. But I do have a question for um, Hunter or Mike. Either one. Um, as far as Pierce Road improvement, you know, I was looking at this, and if a sidewalk were required across Pierce Road, that'd be a thousand feet. If somebody then to the north you know, subdivided and was required to do a sidewalk, you know, a thousand feet's a fifth of a mile. I mean, eventually it kind of goes on down. I go, you know, we didn't require sidewalks down um, Red Barn Road, and I drive by there all, all the time. I would go 32 to work and usually, you know, come back uh, County Road 48 to 33. So I'm familiar with those areas, and I see people walking down Red Barn Road all the time out there pushing strollers just in the middle of the road. Um, you know, back and forth, and I just wonder, you know, a thousand feet, and then somebody next door has a couple hundred feet, and somebody next door, and then pretty soon you've got a mile long sidewalk that if you, you know, jog back and forth on it's a couple miles to get your exercise. Um, I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know what the, you know, whoever makes the motion can take that into consideration and do with what they'd like. And my other question is Pierce Road. Um, Trey was commenting on the county having the purview of requiring that to be improved or not. Don't we normally require roads, to, when we do a subdivision, don't we normally require that roads are to our subdivision standards before we allow it to be subdivided? So wouldn't we require Pierce Road to be built to our subdivision standards if their subdivision is, you know, um, has eight lots in front of, well, nine lots with one being 600 feet deep? Wouldn't we require Pierce Road to be brought to standard? We, we would um, have a standard. Um, there is an opportunity for an applicant, applicant to request a, a lane that's reduced width in our regulations. Uh, that has not been made. So 20 feet uh, paid service with from gutter, I believe, is the requirement for that. So is that just assumed that Pierce Road is going to be upgraded no, to that? Let's, um, so for, for the subdivision regulation, for a lot to be created has to front upon a paved, publicly maintained road. It doesn't state the who standards or specification that that road was built to. Any new road inside a development or required to be built because of a development would have to be built to our subdivision standards for our right-of-way road section. Asking about. What's that? I think the eight, eight lots are what you're kind of asking. If you just take everything else away, um, and this is a publicly maintained road, but it is a county maintained road, even though it's in a uh, prescriptive easement. The county is, I think it's on the road. Is there a width requirement for our definition of a road? Uh, the Baldwin County does have a map of roads that they pave and maintain. Um, I don't know the answer to how this one's categorized under Baldwin County. Well, I'm just asking that. I mean, I know, you know, we, um, with some of my business, I've used Wayne Cabo a good bit in business with single tax and different projects, and he's got, you know, um, tractor trailer and dump trucks, you know, back up and down there all the time, and, you know, farm tractors and, you know, different, uh, you know, large equipment going back and forth down there. And I just wonder, you know, we're a lot of lots in here and, and people coming out there, you know, we want people twirling out there and, you know, dump truck comes around there, you know, filled up. I just, it just, you know, concerns me, you know, if we're going to allow that kind of density, you know, that, that you know, to me, you know, I wouldn't want to be driving a dump truck down that road and have some high school kid twirl around that, you know, thing and hit me. And whenever a dump truck or a, you know, tractor trailer gets in a wreck, it's always the dump truck or the tractor trailer's fault, you know, no matter what happened. And I, can't, I, I can't project how the county is doing this. And, and it's great questions. 
I'm just wondering, is that, is that in our purview if we were to say, you know, and just for the audiences, you know, uh, you know, I've been taught over the years that if something meets the subdivision regulations, that whether we like it or not, that we're pretty much required to uh, to approve it. Just like if you go to get a building permit, you wouldn't expect the person, you know, you're trying to get your building permit from to say, well, gosh, you know, I don't really want a house there. Sorry, I know you bought the lot, but I don't really want a house there. I, you know, my kids played nearby there and so forth that you've got your, you know, legal rights in the United States and in Alabama to develop your land. And and if they meet the subdivision regulations, we're required to approve them with rare exceptions of, you know, extreme health and, you know, safety and welfare. And I'm just wondering on this particular one with that road, if we, you know, should require that that road be built to a, you know, to a certain standard since you know, we're allowing this many houses to go into this area and there is development down there and, and you know, trucks and tractors and things to go back and forth. You've got, you've got Part of the ingress egress on 32 and Pierce Road. I mean, you need the two, two means of ingress and egress for fire trucks. That, that's where I was going with this, but, but yeah, there's Pierce a reduced. Yeah. Well, then you got nine a fire access things. road is can be yeah, a reduced width it's if it's the secondary. Yeah, yeah. I think the yeah and I'm, I'm not saying the fire access. I mean, they come in with their sirens blaring and they can get down there. I'm just saying, you know, day in day out, you got a you know trucks coming through and you know on an undersized, you know, poorly improved road. Yeah, and Mr. President, if I may, my concerns are the adverse effects. The same thing that we saw, and we we have two professionals giving two separate indicators here as far as adversely affecting the downstream neighbor. Um, I don't know in this situation do we bring in a third party um, to make a better decision on where we're going, but um, I, I would suggest that um, if, if that's a possibility uh, because of the conflicted um, information that we have present to us. Uh, is that a recommendation? Uh, we, we have yeah. access to that. We have that budget. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, and can do that. I want to get a little closer to your microphone. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Getting tired over here. Um, we do have, we can accommodate that. Uh, we do have one engineer under contract annually. So we, we can do that. Uh, and you do and have an update. we can also reach out to county, Baldwin County on this to just um, th this is a tough one for us because Baldwin yeah. County does a very preliminary review the highway department for the roads but they don't really get into the weeds until um, they get a permit which they don't get until they get through us so it's, it's another one of those chicken and egg situations but we can certainly reach out to them based on the conversations we've had here and ask for some points of clarification if, if that suits the I would like to know if the Baldwin County uh, I think it's this is an area that's had a lot of issues and probably you know deserves a second look and, and I mean if the other commissioners agree I'm not trying to speak for anybody other than Corey and myself um, and I'm only speaking for Corey because he just said it so <laughs> and, and the other issue that I would have I'd like to know from the county what on a typical subdivision like this their requirements would be for Pierce Road improvements to see, you know, if the county says they require those improvements anyway, then that would be one less thing that we would have to be concerned with. I would so, like to have an answer on the uh, downstream rec receipt of uh, water from an upstream neighbor too. So if you could get Chris, uh, uh, if, what someone, else is there? If he, if he doesn't have a conflict, we probably need to get another one since we're. If, if we had already made this motion, then we could probably ask Chris to you know, look at it in future reference, but we might need yeah, somebody we're, else. We're going to need somebody else on that one. Yeah. I don't know if I can get that one that quick because we don't have anyone under contract. So I could certainly do everything I can do. What I would suggest, because there is some time periods uh, that we got to meet here, is that. If the applicant is okay, and then we're going where I think this is going, the, it's tabled until we can get those answers. If we can get those before the July meeting, that's great. If not, um, it might be the next meeting before we can get all these resolved. So I would suggest having the applicant be okay with that before um, you, know, you get those 30 days windows and, and some of those things. Mostly, most of the time, I'm 
after what final plat, but it's something I just recommend here. I want to get more clarification on the traffic study because our our what was presented to us was October, and then Trey said it was April. So um, good question, John. And I had to go back and look because there's different time frames, and I wanted to tell you exactly the uh, data is good for three years. So our it doesn't. Uh, if it's been updated, that's great, but, but it is three years, and I got a big red notes to amend our regulations. It is the same exact situation on Highway 32 that it is on 104, that it is on 64, and it is on and 181, and it is on Highway 90. They're all going to school in the morning, and everybody's coming home. Don't get on, don't get on 32 in the afternoon when school's getting ready to let out. The um, point is, all of those intersections are train wrecks, yeah. and and the the highway department says, oh well, we fixed 181. It's going to make that okay. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It didn't fix 64. It didn't fix Highway 90. So the point is, there's a there's a question there too. I would want to. I do really do, for a lot of reasons. But I want to know the answer to what Jessica McDill brought up about the uh, the. The downstream water, and, and, and I because this is that, that's a foreign one to me, but she has been known to give me a wrinkle. Our next meeting would be July 4th, which is a Monday this year, so it'd be easy to know which. So, July so 7th. It's gonna, no, I said it would be July 4th, which is a the Monday this year. year, so it's going to be Allie just told me it's going to be Thursday, July 7th, so that's more than 30 days that we have. So. Trey can voluntarily, um, you know, allow us to have a little more time to answer some of these questions, or we can vote on it at this time. Can't we make a recommendation to? Not not over thirty days. We can. Not over thirty days. And today's the sixth. Then July right, is the seventh. Over you. So I'm, two things I'm good with. One, you can make a motion to continue upon third-party reviews. Okay. Or, you know, if needed, um, I'm okay with tabling it till the next meeting. Yeah, let's table it till the next meeting. Yeah. Can't we table it depending on the third party yeah. reviews? Yeah, let's do both. third Just party reviews case. and, yeah, and get the clarification from yes. legal counsel that we know what the what mean? correct. The legal just we need. A third you mean table it until those are performed? Yes. I will do, we will do everything we can do. And what we'll, we'll, we'll do is, is say by, because um, I know everybody's going to have be heavy ears on this and what if it's going to be at the July meeting or August meeting. Um, we will do everything we can and, and um, I'm trying to figure out how to report to the public which one it's going to be. Um, one of the best ways, probably going to be about the time we have packets out yeah. and, and get that, let, let people know. I can't control, I've got contracts set up for one of you, but the legal is something I'm not for. I think I can make it happen before the year that you like. You do it. Lee, I did want to while I'm at the mic. I wanted to point out you were talking about the roadway widths in Pierce Road and standards for counties. Yes, yes. The, the county has a, has a, a Bible, if you will, and it's required to have roadway design standards, and it's based on traffic data. So a roadway from zero to 750 cars has to meet this standard, and 750 to 1500 has to meet this standard, and everything goes up, and that's how it's based on. This road out there right now is about 18 feet wide, so we're below the 750. So that's where I, we haven't been presented with any request to make a widening. I wanted to clarify that because okay. it seemed like it was loose, and I, I knew the answer, and I had missed my opportunity to speak it, so All right. I, I'm gonna take it now. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. All right, so um, due to, uh, we're going to accept the applicant's request to postpone um, next meeting. Do we need to make a motion to table it? That's okay. To make the motion, to mm -hmm. go ahead and make a motion. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Corey. You, you want to make a motion? Um, yeah, so we'll make a motion to table um, this. Um, SD 20, 2151. Uh, yes, SD 2151, table SD 2151. Um, in order to get third-party review and to investigate legal um, standards as far as our regulations are concerned in the city. I've got a motion. The county. I've got a motion uh, and per, per applicable request. Per applicable request. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. 
Right, motion passes unanimously. Uh, moving on, do we want to take a five can minute we, break? Can we yes. call time out on Let's the take field? a five minute break, stretch your back. Uh, next next item on the agenda is SD2208 Elkins Place. And who's got it? Yes, ma'am. Alrighty, so this case is pretty familiar to you guys. It's actually um, a holdover from March. It was formerly known as Jewett Place Subdivision. So I'll try to be brief, um, but if you have any questions at the end, please let me know. Um, the owner is Donna Elkins, Seth Moore is the applicant and surveyor. It's for a two lot minor subdivision located on the east side of Main Street, uh, about 0.3 miles south of Jewett Street. It's within the extraterritorial jurisdiction of the city of Fairhope and is zoned RSF2 in Baldwin County. Um, it's subject to Baldwin County zoning ordinance and review by their staff. So the main um, issue that we had with the first time we reviewed this case was that it doesn't front on a publicly maintained road, which is um, kind of exhibit in the, exhibited in this picture. You can see the red area is the area that is county maintained and the star is the subject property. So the applicant chose to table it um, until this time. Um, and since then, um, they have submitted two documents with the new application, a turnout permit on a county road for a driveway and a waiver request. Um, they're requesting a waiver from the requirement of the lot being on a publicly maintained road. Um, staff does not support the waiver request and maintains a recommendation of denial. So, um, Mr. Moore is here to answer any questions that you may have as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully this won't be so controversial. Hmm. Um, Yes, we submitted two documents. One, we did ask for a waiver uh, from County Maintain Road. We also got a permit from the county to put a driveway in that right of way of Jewett Street. Um, if you go back to one of the other pictures existing right now, there are four residences that do have driveways onto this stretch, actually five, that have driveways onto this part of Jewett Street. Um, can you, how do I go back a couple of pictures? Linda was the one that was up here. Linda That's good. That's good. Um, this lot right here has a driveway coming on to Jewett. These three right here have a driveway. And this one as well, who you will have a letter from, uh, has a driveway onto Jewett Street. Uh, and we respectfully ask that we be able to uh, do the same thing as they're doing on this. Uh, we meet the zoning for lot size. Uh, do you have any questions? Right. Any questions for the developer at this point? Uh, no, but let me, let me just generally ask, do you consider the, um, do you consider the division of this lot in two lots as being a self-imposed hardship. You talking about the division being a hardship? The the result of the resulting division being a hardship with the with that second lot not having an access. Well, according to the county with the permit they have access. You do now. Right. But you've got to come out, what, on the main street down Jewett? No. We can come out onto that paved section of Jewett that stops just before this lot. Oh, I see it there. And what type of right, what type of easement, what, what would you do for your driveway? You would pave it just like you do pave any it? driveway. Yes, sir. You're going to pave it? Yes, sir. I mean, okay. they. All right, I got it. Oh, thank you very much. You're the man. Right. Any, any other questions for Seth? All right. 
Like, um, and what is the deal on this? Is the the reason for the denial is that it that it's not running a publicly maintained road. The county does not do maintenance here. Uh -huh. So while they might have a allowing a driveway to be installed, there's no um, maintenance of it. And then there's also has been uh, neighbors have have said there are drainage issues in the past that would allow installing the road paving the road would allow us to uh, monitor that drainage as well um, another point is that the road itself ends right about here i don't know if you can see that with the mouse up on the screen wait 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 the what the the dry, the road jewett street it doesn't connect to main street at at, at present oh, so have it to ends be. right about where the mouse is on the screen right. so it'd have to be extended though and who who owns Jewett Street? Is that county owned? It's, it's a county right away. Yes. Okay. But they, um, if you can see, is that second or I think it's second on yes, Jewett second. Street. Jewett East is where the county maintains. Right. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing, so at this time I'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Does anybody from the public wish to speak to this item? Yes, sir. And she'll state your name. And if you didn't get enough, yeah, didn't see uh, get enough <laughs> examples earlier, please state your name. Yeah, and your good address. to see you guys and talk to you. Um, I live at uh, 7048 Jewett, My, uh, Michael Gillespie. And uh, look, I just bought this house. I lived in Fruit and Nut, and my wife wanted to have a place. I have an autistic son, but we didn't have like a street access and all this. And then I get this in the mail, and it's like got that road, which is, doesn't even exist, going straight down to um, Scenic 98. And I jog every day. There's, there's not a lot of sidewalks. People are, drive way too fast. And I just don't, that's just not kind of what we want. And I, I, I feel for them because I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be in that spot. But there's just no road there. It's like a, you know, a cul-de-sac. And so, you know, just wanted to say that's kind of how we feel about it. We, okay. we just don't want to, you know, no disrespect, but. Sure. Yeah, Thank you, sir. All right, anybody else wish to speak to this item? Microphone, Mr. Chairman, you know that. Oh, God. I think so, the last meeting was long. Uh, I'm here to support the staff on it. Um, the Jewett Street, they say Jewett Street, it's a Jewett drainage easement. It's, it's not county maintained, which I didn't realize from second By the street. way, uh, I'm Trip Pittman, 18. Uh, two, two T's Main in street. that. I don't know why it has to have a second yeah, T. We're not related. Two T's are we, in are we there, <laughs> Just that note, we're not and related. Trip Pittman, 20. I apologize. I'm a little, uh, but regardless, uh, staff, I support the recommendation. Uh, my lot, which does have a back exit onto Jewett, has frontage on Main Street. And this lot, the L-shaped lot, the head of it is on Main Street. So it does have access to Main Street. Uh, one point is, so the, and Jewett Street is drainage easement, it's, it's wooded, they'll have to do some clearing also to, to make access to the non-county maintained portion. What they're asking for is a variance from y'all's regulations that do require any new lots to front on a county maintained road. The variance, as I read it, says that it has to be because it can't be because it's, it saves people money, which in this case, if they wanted to go out to Main Street with the lot, then that's more money. And the second is, is the variance uh, can't create any more density, which is what they're asking for y'all. And this does create more density. So by fact, the reasons for the variance in my interpretation as a, as a layman is that it violates uh, two reasons that you can't grant the variance. Thank you for your, any questions. I'll be happy to ask them. But this is right, a, a lot of drainage, like the previous debate. There's all kinds of drainage that runs down to uh, the main. Thank you, Fred. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? In that case, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Commissioners. I do have one question for you, Seth. What What would not be What, what part are you talking about? The paving on the, to, to get, well, you have to pay, you're going to pay Jewett Street down to, to what it sounds like, the main street, right? No. no. What they asked for was to come out of their drive, out of their property, and go to the existing pavement okay. that's there, as shown on the drawing of the survey. And that's what county granted them a permit to do. But that's just a paved driveway, right? Yes, sir. It's not to any kind of standard or anything. It's no, just sir. pavement on the road. That's correct. And, of course, 
you know, whenever they build their house, they're going to have to do some drainage work on that lot to meet county. And I'm not sure if that's in building permit standards. If it's within the city of Fairhope's building permits, then they're going to have to do a pretty good amount of drainage for that house. Uh, which is not going to stop the water that's coming down Jewett, Jewett Street now that goes through there. Uh, you know, when they put their uh, small amount of driveway in, they can make it come back onto their lot and put in some rain gutters because it's really sandy soil and it'll absorb the water very quickly. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Is there any further questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I move we deny SD 22.08 Elkins Place Minor Subdivision. I've got a motion to deny SD 2208. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Oh, yeah, no, I've go ahead. A, That's a second. I've got a second. Any further discussion? Mr. No, Chairman, just, for, just for the record, we need to state any, right. any and all reasons yes. for the recommendation for denial on the motion. Staff recommendations. Thank you. Right. Can I move we deny uh, approval based on the fact it doesn't face an accounting or publicly maintained? Okay. And do I have a second? So second. I, have a, I have a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor of the motion to deny, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right, motion to deny passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda, SD 2216, Fox Hollow, phase three. This is a final uh, this is a uh, <coughs> excuse me. This is a uh, final plat approval. Um, someone sent me some that I forwarded on to Ali. Sent me some concerns earlier today, and I, you know, replied that this is actually to check and see if this met the earlier design standards. This has nothing to do with the design standards and whether we like them or not. It's just is the as built equivalent to what the uh, proposal was so I forwarded that on to Ali so it would be in the record and did respond so this is an FYI and this final plat approval is just uh, that finishes with us as well this has nothing to do with any ordinances so um, this will be the final vote on this and the final public hearing on this All right. um, <clears throat> so the owner is Montrose Properties LLC the engineer and applicant is Goodwill Goodwin Mills and Kaywood um, the application is for a 32 lot subdivision located on the east side of County Road 13 between County Road 13 and Fox Hollow phases one and two. The property is owned R2 and is within the city limits and the preliminary plat was approved in November 18, 2018 at the Planning Commission meeting. So the, we've kind of included in the slides um, the site plan approval and um, the landscape plan and they were in compliance like I said with the preliminary plat approval um, so um, there were a couple of items in terms of the punch list that um, we wanted to discuss tonight um, the right-of-way inspection indicated that the pond between lots 24 and 25 needs better ve better vegetation um, but the pond slopes have been sodded since the time the staff report was written so that um, item has changed since that time um, the right-of-way inspection indicated that the street trees needed to be installed in common areas and um, that common area landscaping has been bonded. Um, so a couple of side notes. Um, the final plat must be recorded within 120 days after the date of final approval. Um, the subdivision has been built and designed in conformance with both the approved preliminary plat and the PUD site plan. Um, and then follow-up activities required by staff and the applicant. Um, we have to get a copy of the recorded plat, a copy of the O&M agreement, um, and the maintenance and guarantee agreement should be executed by the developer. 
Um, the mayor signs this agreement to fully execute it. And there's a couple of other notes, including um, remember to include the instrument number of the recorded plat and to include 30 days in paragraph three. Okay. So again, we recommend approval of SD 2216 Fox Hollow phase three, subject to the following condition. Um, phase one no longer applies, but we just ask that they complete the follow-up activities. Okay. Just to clarify, when you said that street trees have been bonded, have they been installed and bonded, or have they been bonded so that They've been bond bonded so that they'll be to, installed later. To install. Okay. Yes. When the, the heat, when the homes are built? They didn't want to plant the trees in June and for some have. reason. <laughs> like I do with my yeah. green thumb. Yeah. <laughs> I had one as well. Yes. All right. Any further questions for staff? All right. Thank you, Casey. Um, I will go ahead. Does anybody uh, want to speak on behalf of the applicant? Anybody here from Goodwin, Mills, and Kwood? All right. Uh, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing at this time. Um, anybody from the public wish to speak to this item? Yes, ma'am. If you'll please state your name and your address for the record. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jenny or Jennifer White. I live at 733 Colpio, which is in phase, t phase two of Fox Hollow. And uh, my concerns are that you're being presented uh, as accepting a 32 lot subdivision and the improvements. Um, this 32 lot subdivision is phase, t uh, is phase three, excuse me, and it connects to phase two of Fox Hollow, which is a 60 lot subdivision. Right now, uh, when the subdivision was originally built, phase one, the primary ingress and egress was on Morphy Avenue through Hollow Haven. Um, it's a rather circuitous, you turn quite a few times to get back to where phase two is in phase three. The um, Kip Fox Road, which is indicated as the, the main road uh, for this phase, uh, is presented as only servicing 32 lots. It does not. It serves 92 lots with uh, an average automobile count of 2.5 or 3 cars per house. So the problem lies with the um, width of the road and that and I understand that it was built, you know, as approved, but the information has changed and you were not presented accurate information. Well, we were. This was a phase three and the phase three has 32 lots okay. and was approved as such. Phase two and phase one and all the surrounding traffic was taken into account when the traffic studies were done for this project. Okay. But well, this project is just a 32 lot subdivision, but all the surrounding would be taken into account for that. Okay. Well, um, it is not the width uh, and the lack of a turn lane on 13 will be a problem. And, you know, you just, I would suggest that in the future, if when you are doing subsequent phases, that you take into account the uh, construction as built because um, all the folks in the back are not going to continue to go out. And the, and the entrance of Morphe is inadequate also. Okay. But um, it is a problem. Yeah, we um, depend on the traffic engineers, and when they do these, they say whether a turn lane is needed based on their numbers and, you know, with their little mm -hmm. things out there, seeing how mm -hmm. many people are going by. And we basically trust that occasionally we'll have one that we just kind of raise an eyebrow on and we'll, you know, like earlier today, get a second opinion on. But mm -hmm. the traffic engineers are supposed to take all of that into account. Okay. Well, I suggest that from 2018 to 2022, things have changed. Yes, ma'am. So, Thank you. Like Anybody else wish to speak to this item? All right. I close the public hearing at this time. Motion, and Mr. Chairman. Uh, SD 2216, Fox Hollow Phase 3. I move that we approve subject staff recommendations. I've got a motion to approve subject staff recommendations. Do I have a second? Second. I'll go ahead and. Put it on down to Harry, if you will, so we know he was here when we read the minutes. Um, any further any, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Any aye. opposed say nay. All right, next item on the agenda, SD 2217, Advanced Dental uh, Multi-Occupancy 
Mop. Mop. All right. Commissioners, this is SD 2217. Uh, the applicant is SC Civil on behalf of owner uh, Fritz Harsherberger, DMD, LLC, for preliminary approval of advanced dental. It's a 11 unit multiple occupancy project. It's located on the east side of Highway 181, about a quarter mile south of County Road 48 or Fairhope Avenue. The property is currently zoned B4. Uh, it actually had a, has site plan approval with this that was reviewed in 2015, case SR 15.02. On the site, you can see uh, the aerial and the zoning map. Uh, real quick, there's the approved site plan from 2015. Uh, next slide is not much different. It's the proposed site plan uh, built into conformance with the additional units. Um, it did trigger an MOP review. That's why we are here tonight. Uh, the utilities, it, Riviera is the electric provider. Sewer is handled on site septic. Uh, the health department did confirm that construction of the first building took into account the second building that was going to be built for that septic system. Fairhope Utilities is for gas and water. For the water, during building permit stage, a fire hydrant will be needed to meet building code. For the subdivision regulations, the fire hydrant is within the 450 feet. Therefore, one is not required of this subdivision application. Traffic letter was provided by the engineer of record that the daily trips don't trigger, a day, don't trigger the traffic study per our regulations. Uh, again, the detention pond was built in the first phase, was built for the entire site. The engineer has confirmed that it was built as designed and is going to provide an operations and maintenance plan uh, after this is done. The landscaping is in compliance with the approved site plan. The existing building contains five units. Approval of this application would allow up to six units in the proposed building. The layout, parking, landscaping, detention is in compliance with the approved site plan. Uh, staff's recommendation is conditional approval of SD 22.17, Advanced Dental Multiple Occupancy Project, with the following conditions. Provide a recorded copy of the O&M plan and include a utility plan showing installation of a fire hydrant and the construction drawings submitted for building permit. Be happy to answer any questions. I believe we have Larry Smith with us tonight with SC Civil that can answer any questions as well. Hunter's responding to my text. Is responding to my text. So can we crank some AC up here before I get sleepy? <laughs> Thank you. Myself falling asleep. <laughs> this is 11 units. Um, it's just one building, right? It's one. There's. This will be the second building on the site. Right. The first yeah. building exists. I mean, the first building. Five units. This is just this one is, building. Will be six units inside this one building. Okay. Yes, and there'll all be offices. Yes, and, sir. It's, and it's something in the B4. Okay. Uh, well, it just looked like one to me. I, was, I wasn't sure. So. Hey, all right, cool. Six units inside the one building. So, Mike, cool. clarification. Yes, sir. Office and possible clinic, that's why they're going to a board of adjustments, correct? No, this is. This is not that one. No, this is a the number of different people. case. Oh, that's the other one. Okay, that's that's, that's the one we already heard. My head. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay, no, this very, is very just good. zone B4. Okay, the site plan good. review was for the site specific, not for the use. That's what I want to clarify. Any use inside okay. B4 is allowed. This is the if other it requires one. <laughs> board of adjustment approval, then we would have crossed that bridge when they gotcha. submitted. Corey, if you ever figure out the difference in a, in a mop and a site plan review, tell me because <laughs> we're going to lunch and can explain it to you. Um, Larry, do you have anything to add to that? It's okay. Long. Thank you, Larry. Right. Thank you very much. Very long. Stay comfortable. <laughs> Anybody wish to speak to this item? I make a motion. I'll close the public hearing. <laughs> yes, sir. Motion, Mr. Chairman. SD 22.17, Advanced Dental MOP. I move we approve subject staff recommendations. Okay. I have a motion to second. Any further? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Jump in there. Next Get item on the agenda, SD 2218, Greenfield Subdivision. So this is a public hearing. The applicant is SE, SE Civil on behalf of the owner Sunny Hill LLC in Hilliard Vaughn Street the third, on uh, behalf of the uh, owner, soon to be possible owner, Lenar Homes of Alabama LLC for preliminary approval of Greenfield subdivision. This is an 80 lot major subdivision. The property is approximately 40 acres and on the east side of County Road 13, uh, 0.38 miles south of County Road 34. The property is currently zoned R2, medium density single family residential district. Uh, and you guys heard this a few months ago when it came through for the conditional annexation. Uh, on the screen, you see it is right, a, right across from the R1 zone property that is owned by the city of Fairhope. Uh, right side is the aerial. It's currently existing farmland and it does have the Gray Thorn subdivision connecting to the southern boundaries of the property. 
on the screen is the plat. North is oriented up for a change. The site data is our straight R2, um, minimum lot size per standards, 100 or 10,500 square feet um, in area. The utilities all work in Baldwin County right away. We'll require permitting from the highway department, the EMC for the electric prov provider. Fairhope Utilities is the sewer provider. There's a lift station that is proposed on the west side of County Road 13. Now this location is on private property. And as I pointed out, that is owned by the city of Fairhope and requires city council approval for the location of that. At the time of review, staff cannot assume access will be granted by city council. Uh, we require the applicant to provide some information in an alternate location um, in the chance that that is not approved by city council. Uh, that has been accommodated. There is room uh, for that if that falls through for it to be located there. Um, gas can be <coughs> provided and aid to construction costs may be required depending on the gas load requested. Uh, Fair of Utilities is the water provider. There will be a water main upgrade connecting 32 to County Road 13 to the proposed subdivision will be required. All costs as well as installation associated with the required upgrades will be the responsibility of the developer and will also be evaluated by the water department at time of construction. And at and is a communications provider. Uh, for the traffic study, there was one con uh, conducted by Samantha Islam. Uh, according to the study, there is no turn lane or other improvements recommended at this time. Uh, as everyone is aware, there is the roundabout construction going on currently at County Road 13 and 32. And due to this closure, um, an updated traffic study will be required after the completion for review and any of the recommended improvements from that study will be required before final plat application. Um, drainage, uh, the water is collected in a series of inlets and underground pipes and routed to three wet ponds. Uh, the stormwater report indicates the proposed development will have no adverse effects to the adjacent properties. Uh, the landscaping plan, uh, all the street trees are planted, planted in right away as required. Their area around the detention pond is landscaped with trees. Uh, the landscape plans do need to be amended to show sod around the detention ponds and the central green space area. The green space requirements are exceeded. Um, there's a preserve on the east side of development and a centrally located park that account for three and a half acres of the three required 3.99 acres. Uh, the additional green space is a trailer greenway north of the preserved area, uh, creating a total of 8.2 acres of total green space. Okay. We do have a waiver request. Um, this is a minor request. Uh, we've talked about this with them for a while, and you'll also have noticed in your packets there was a alternate proposed by staff. Uh, the requested waiver is from the eight foot required planting strip of table 5.3 of our subdivision regulations. That table dictates where, what the right of way is going to look like. Road width, curb and gutter, landscape area for planting of trees, then your sidewalk. Um, the applicant proposes the below road section, which includes a seven foot wide planting strip. I believe it allowed a larger gutter and asphalt service, but I'll let uh, the engineer of record speak to that in more detail for you. Staff, in coordination with other departments, we support the waiver request, but we recognize that the planning commission approves or deny it. Staff doesn't object to the request, but proposes the below alternative uh, that you may consider this, this evening. On this slide, they are side by side. The top is what is requested. The bottom is what is proposed by staff. Kind of hard to see. Uh, the yellow highlight is the sidewalk area. The green highlighted area is what would be the, lands the landscape or sodded area. Uh, and ultimately what we're doing, what we have requested, is moving the sidewalk to within two feet from the edge of the curb, allowing a two foot strip of grass between it, effectively moving the planted street trees on the outside of the sidewalk allowing them more room for the root system to grow and not impede the sidewalk, the roadway. And as these trees mature, the branches not overhang into the street where they're, they're hitting delivery trucks and the vehicles that are living in there and coming by. Um, some of the general comments is the pre-construction meeting will be required prior to issuance of any building permits and that the sidewalks and street trees are required to be installed prior to application for final plat. Uh, the waiver recommendation, staff recommends approval of the waiver request. 
for the application itself. Staff rec recommends SD approval of SD 22.18 Greenfields preliminary plat with the following conditions. One, approval of the waiver request to grant a different roadway section. Two, that an updated traffic study will be required after completion of construction at County Road 13 and 32 for review and any recommended improvements will be required before final plat application. All costs as well as installation associated with the required upgrades are the responsibility of the developer and will be evaluated by the water department at time of construction. And to clarify, that is for the water the required water upgrades. Four, the list station location on city property shall be approved by the city council or located inside the development. And five, the landscape plans need to be amended to show sod around the detention ponds and central green space. I'd be happy to answer any questions that staff that you may have. Have, have a question? Sorry, I, I do too. That, but, Go okay, ahead. I thought that was a motion about to come out. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I got a question. We still have a. Okay. Public hearing. Got public <laughs> so you know I wasn't okay. going to say that was right. public okay. hearing coming. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, I, I just, there's two schools of thought on the trees. I see what you're mm -hmm. trying to do by giving it one more space, but, um, you know, with traditional neighborhood development, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of folks who think that the trees overhanging the street is what you see in older neighborhoods, and that's kind of what makes it more charming and less like, you know, new. This would not prevent that. So what, um, you're not talking about a huge move here. Mm -hmm. what, um, what it would allow you to do is the trees actually get mature before you start chopping them. Because it's not when they're mature, it's in that awkward stage, those teenage years of a tree, that they're having to cut limbs off uh, and, and where delivery trucks riding down the road. So it just gets them enough, but when they mature, they'll actually create that kind of alley effect. That, that well, you know, we're talking about eight or 10 feet off the road. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty mature. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're <laughs> most of a lot of times it's live oaks, so you think about yeah. limbs on live oaks when you're mature. Under thirty feet. Is this something that you're looking at us making a change to in the future, or given as an option in the future? Potentially, we've we've discussed internally at the staff level of providing multiple road section details uh, for the engineer and them to present to you at the time of application instead of every one of them being exactly the same and fitting what mold is That's going to right. be benef more beneficial for that particular development. That's right. Sometimes they, you know, like the that. trees chosen may be better to be closer to the street and other trees looking for the look mm -hmm. that they're going for may better well off serve. And again, we're not looking at what are these trees, you know, we always refer to them as the lollipop trees, they get set in and then, you know, they're this tall and that big. Well, that's, that's great when they're two feet from the road and no problems, but we're trying to look down the road at 15, 20 years from now, going through some of our older subdivisions that we do have. Some of them are planted further away and they've been able to grow up with very little trimming and are still natural looking. Some of the other trees planted closer have kind of been trim, trimmed up and nubbed up to where you end up with a three quarter of a tree well, the, looking at you. The counterpoint to that is that there's the 24 inch strip of, of sod might be a little sad that and I, I just wonder if within that seven foot shoulder that they proposed if perhaps just the distance that the trees are planted away from the street might achieve the same effect if you plant the trees closer to the sidewalk. Then we run into issues when uh, the tr when the roots start growing up of the sidewalks buckling. Well, yeah, yeah I think a lot of it depends on the trees. If you do a, you want a tree if you do planted. a Bradford pear, it's one thing. If you do a live oak, it's going to run some distance. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And I do and think you know part of that we're going to need to start looking at sixty foot right of ways. Yeah. With all the fiber, everything, the right of ways are getting crowded. Yeah, we, yeah. So mm -hmm. meters, uh, they're already thinking right away and then usually 10 or 15 feet of easement into right. the lots. There's a conflict of a lot of things and getting those in there. It's, it's tough. Uh, Mike. Yes, sir. Why, why, do they, why are they requesting us? I know this is minor, but, mm -hmm. they, but it's much bigger than being minor. Why are they requesting a waiver for a one foot difference in the uh it's so I'll, I'll, I'll let, I'll let Andrew, uh, okay. Larry answer it, 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 that this is what I want, detail, what I want to say about it it's all about setting precedent and it yeah. could be one inch it can be one foot it could be a hundred feet but once we <laughs> set once we set a precedent <coughs> then you're gonna have to do for everybody mm -hmm. that we're gonna do for y'all so if it's not really an it if it's if it's if it's a bona fide issue or if it's a self-imposed hardship then that's that, that's something to consider 
but to begin to make a change just because you wanted a waiver and the same goes with you guys on whether y'all recommend approval you can recommend whatever but i'm i'm here to tell you i i i strongly am of the opinion that you don't do for one you're not willing to do for everybody and it's not just mm -hmm. once once you break one rule like that once you bring one break one every rule is then subject to a uh, to a modification or a change well, I, I, I totally agree with you, Art, but that's why I was asking, is this something we're looking at maybe changing in the future? And it was something I could feel comfortable saying, hey, we'll get this waiver subject to your planning live oaks, you know, you versus, be you know, yeah. versus uh, yeah. whatever, what are these things in downtown Fairhill, these little olives and all these little crappy trees that, you know, I go through these subdivisions, it amazes me, I go through a subdivision like one over behind big lots. And, I mean, this subdivision's... 32 years old and all they planted are Bradford pears and they're all like in those little elms and they're all dead and dying Well, Bradford pears got the weakest limbs of right. all of them so in, a, in, a, in a in a in a when a gnat flies by the limbs break What I'm saying here it is 32 years later and all these trees are dying and if they had done live oaks It'd be the most beautiful subdivision you ever been well, in. Well, the same way it was downtown, but the but, but <laughs> my point my point is this that that you can say, okay, well, we will grant you that if you plant live oaks. Well, okay, what if the next person comes in and says, well, hell, I want to plant, I want to plant uh, sweet gum, and so the no. next says, I want to plant maple. Say no, you plant live oaks, we'll grant it. Well, I don't there know you that you can. Sure. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not a. I'm not about picking trees for folks, but I, although well, I am in the forestry <laughs> business, I'll be happy. Gee, that's your whole pick job. Your trees. You about art? It's your job. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's that's just my comment. And you I can, can tell you that, tell that that eight I foot was designed for. The planting of trees there was previous times before this was in our regulations that sometimes the planting strip was four foot sometimes it was six foot and it was a big kind of controversial how big does it need to be and finally the standard was set at eight feet and here's the road section we're now revisiting it to see if that is still the standard that we want to continue to go by or if there is and there, there have been a lot of problems <coughs> or i'm a change, know, change the rule hunter. change the rule that's what we're looking you don't like the rule then change it well that's so, hunter has been talking to me about they're talking about possibly doing that and yeah. and i will yeah. say you know one of the things that's kind of changed um in construction a lot of times you were seeing stand-up gutters they talk take up this half foot that's being asked for is valley gut gutters are spreading out instead of the stand-up yeah. So we do have I do have a question. I, need a lot of yeah. I, I have a question for yes, you. Yes, sir. I didn't see uh, a question maybe for Larry and um, um, any type of um, playground or, or activity oh. for the. Yeah, let's get Larry up for that. Yeah. Yeah, if if I, not, not there, Mike. Yeah, that's what Larry. I said, Larry. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Larry, can you. Amenities. There's a there, there's a lot of well, listen, a lot of questions. Let's, let's uh, mention about the if you'll just answer Art's question first okay. and then come down to Corey's say. So, this whole concept came up um, actually during our pre-app meeting. There was a lot of back and forth, a lot of questions, and I really am curious how many right of ways are truly have that have been built recently meet y'all standards because it's hard to fit all that in if you start taking all the dimensions that the subdivision regs regulations state. And then you take into what we were hearing from the utilities department and stuff like that. Like on one of the recent subdivisions, we had a transformer sitting right in the middle where the sidewalk was supposed to be. They ran all their uh, utility department came, put all their conduits up right on the property corner. Well, that's where the sidewalk's supposed to go. So we had to shift around. So the question was, how far do you want the sidewalks off the property line? And the answer came back, we want a foot. Well that gives room for the property corners to be set versus putting an X in the concrete. You actually have a real property corner because if you have a sidewalk there and now sidewalks are required in the beginning, what used to happen before y'all required sidewalks is we'd come in and put all the property corners in and then either the builders would rip them out whenever the sidewalks would be built or they would bend them over and build the sidewalks right on the property line. That's how my property corner is in my neighborhood. My lawnmower hits it every single time because the builder just yanked it to the side and every time I'm cutting grass I like, ah, there it goes again <laughs> so that was one of the issues so um, you know we came in a foot off the property line and then the other um, you know six inches of what we're talking about is the valley gutter your standard valley gutter is two foot six inches and so that was one of the comments like well you can do a two foot well the standard paving machine 
that most of the contractors use now, they don't have a form for that. Um, they have a two foot six inch valley gutter, which we all want the water to stay in the gutters anyway. A larger gutter means it's able to actually handle the flow that's running to it. So that's really where it came from. We're not trying to um, do anything that's saving any money. We've, we're just trying to create a road section that ha meets the intent of the standard and is also helping some issues that we've seen with utilities. I don't necessarily have an issue with the road section that's proposed by the staff. We tossed around several items in that pre-app meeting trying to figure out how to get everything to work. The only issue that I would say on the proposed by staff recommendation is you're going to need four foot away from the valley gutter from the sidewalk to be able to have the ADA compliant ramp because you're raising up four inches at a one in 12 slope that's going to be four feet and so with that sidewalk two foot off the back of your gutter you're not going to be able to ramp that four inches from that's created by the valley. That'd be the only um, concern I'd have with that paving section. I mean, we can we can show the sidewalks, you know, and show that eight foot planting strip. But the issues that I just stated with your water services, your power meter, um, your power, the transformers, everything else, um, just in in the property corners becomes an issue. And that, that's the only reason we were looking at um, this waiver. I mean it. The, it the, doesn't the, save it doesn't save us and we're not doing it to save money it doesn't save money it's all the it, same curbing and it, and, and it doesn't it, it really doesn't matter to me it yeah. doesn't i mean it doesn't matter yeah but it's it it, it truly is the principle yeah. you, if you want to if you want to change it yeah then let's change it in the rules and, like and say, i, I if believe that like, if you don't like the law then yeah. change the law and i, I, I believe I that's agree, what and that's why i will support the waiver and i'll vote to change the law both well yeah. You could tie them all together to where somebody's not going to come in here next month and say, "Well, y'all did this for Larry, and I want to do it now too." But I it's, got no problem. But it's something Larry different. But the it'll be something course. different. <laughs> <laughs> the, the alternate. They so threw the plan. The the, we we talked about this, and they kind of threw the idea as what it would look like. We had the chance then to walk through with the utilities and kind of go, "Does this work for everyone?" And, and they said, "Okay." You know, I, I think looking at some alternatives. You know, are we going to be in here next month with this? I, I, probably not, because we want to have a few alternatives that relate to um, design speed of road. So if we could require a 40-foot right away, here's the street section it looks like. Or maybe there's two or three options. If we're going to approve a lane. We're going to approve uh, something like this. Uh, some standards for speed control. Those are the things we're working on. Working on. Okay, so hey, how do you handle this? Hey, hey Chris, who who left us at our time of need um <laughs> do uh, you have any heartburn over this waiver that art's discussing i mean just reading the standards for waiver an extraordinary hardship may result from strict compliance with these regulations due to unusual topographic or physical conditions the condition is beyond the control of the subdivider. The requested waiver will not have the effect of nullifying the purpose and intent of the regulations. The waiver is the minimum deviation from the required standard necessary to relieve the hardship. The waiver shall not have an adverse effect on adjacent landowners or future landowners or the public. The waiver is necessary so that substantial justice is done. Those are the standards for a waiver. So that is not for me to say if that's consistent. That's for y'all to decide that. But in terms of, <laughs> well, uh, that's, that's, that's sliding, but yeah. <laughs> well, uh, but the intent it, it does go on to say that the planning commission, in its judgment, can require conditions to secure the objectives and the intent of what the subdivision regulations are in, trying to accomplish. So, taking all that into consideration, I mean, I think. The, the concern that's raised and wanting to be consistent with utilities and having access with the tree roots and all those are, are valid reasons to, to consider it, I think. Okay. I have one, in terms of setting a precedent, my other concern is, you know, it sounds like the, we've lost it, we've lost a foot of green space, you know, it, and maybe it's just because the gutters got bigger, six inches each side, or is, no, that's not the whole thing, because that's only six inches. But it, I, I don't want to set, you know, in this case, they actually yeah. have a, a, it, oh, a... That is the foot. It, well, you have a six-inch gutter, and then you have a six-inch um, strip on the back so you can set irons. You have the conduits that are popping up from the utilities and stuff like that. So when they so prop up on the... So you've only lost six inches of green space. 
yeah, those six replaced inches. Replaced by concrete, but the, so yeah. I, that that's just I mean on each side. I'm that's, sorry. That, yeah, so that's, that's, that's minor, but it's just sort of like that erosion of green space replacing by concrete that I'd want to be careful about. And mm -hmm. there, with this one, they're providing a lot of excess green space. But if we were setting a precedent. I wouldn't want to say it's okay to have that much more concrete and that much less green space. And, and I think if you, wanted, think if you wanted to accomplish that, and, and you either you either increase the size of the right way, or you require, because I don't think, give, given the option, I think we're going to put in valley gutters like this. If you want to require, look at summer oaks, you all have stained up gutters, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was required at the times when I mean, you used, you know, that, that put, takes a less smaller footprint, so you probably gain that six inches plus or, or you just person. require the eight foot shoulder and then that leads somebody to do whatever gutter they need to do to make it happen i mean i, I, I is is two feet is two feet next time going to be any different what uh, three feet I, 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 ten feet you see where so, you see where it goes i mean and, and don't think it doesn't go that way because you know what like i do it, eventually somebody's going to play somebody will play the game and then you're going to be caught between a rock and a hard place. Well, I think I, I think if you go out and look, I'm, I'm going to say this candidly. I think there, this, you'll find this out there. I'm like sorry. In a lot of other subdivisions. Yeah. I think you'll find this situation in a lot yeah, of we subdivisions. We didn't approve it. No, uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure if you went in and actually measured this, well, this is what you end up with. And I just but, I think that it was just wasn't. We brought it up to y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I, I think it was made aware. Versus in the past, so where actually, I, actually yeah. I think it's a good thing that he actually brought it to our attention because what they're saying is they've been sliding on this for a long time, and he's actually coming to the table for us to give that subjective opinion, which I respect. So well, now we can kind of ask those questions when these come up, and he's offered an honest opportunity right here and gave us information as well, uh, because now we know what's going on out there. But I think we're following the suit on this particular well, situation. And, and there, there are some issues where I mean there's there's projects that have six inch easements so that's the alternative you can require a six inch easement to accommodate you know the, the on each side of the road mm -hmm. to accommodate but that get what what happens in practical matters you put that six inch easement to get what we're our street section well that easement is where Typically, if it's uh, electric is going there, transformers are going there, uh, water meters, gas meters, fiber, um, all of that's going in that easement too. So if it's meant for uh, a, a tree, then we've got conflicts. And, and so- And, sorry, go ahead. No, no but that, that's, we, we, we've looked at this before and, and created the easement to just say, well, let's move it over here. But then there's, there's, there's conflicts when we get and, and I, was, I, was, I was gonna say there, there are still building setbacks along the frontage and none of that has changed so I mean the green space is there it's just being pushed to that point um, because I, when you take the road paving section I just don't think the 50 foot with all the when you start adding all the math up it doesn't get you there um, and so that that was what we brought up because we we didn't want to start the design of the subdivision without clarity on that issue when we started you know laying everything out and so that that was the first one um, I've got a couple other points if, if but we can keep talking about this one if y'all are no we're, we're good um, I did want to point out on the lift station we originally had it shown on our um, on the subdivision property and in conversations with staff um, and the future plans for um, hopefully one day um, some ball fields over on the adjacent city property um, it was brought to our attention that it'd probably be more beneficial for the city for the lift station to go there. That way they can gravity feed to the lift station versus them having to pump into a force main that we've created. And so that's the reason for that. Um, I have not had a chance to speak with um, Councilman Martin, but I've spoken with the other one that thought it was a good idea. Um, so we're, we're hoping that will be well received by the city council um, because it's actually going to cost us more put the lift station on the adjacent property because now we have to bore under the um, county road 13 with a, a gravity main which is going to be larger than what the force main would have been but um, we think it'll be a benefit for um, the city and so that's why we've shown that on the plans like i said that's it was originally planned to be on um, this property so we have the room for it if it's if the city council 
um, decides that they don't want to have it gravity would be awesome. Yeah. Um, and there was one other thing I thought. Um, I know there was a question about uh, Councilman Martin had a question about um, the playground we do in the landscape plan within that um, center green space. Um, I don't think it's a playground, but there's um, some landscaping, there's some benches, and then it's just an open park green space. And we also have to preserve with a, a mulch trail going around the wetland feature that's back there and the wet detention pond um, that will also have aerator fountains and make it a nice feature. Um, any other questions? Because yeah. I know it's been well, a long we'll go back to your Go back to your to uh, streetscape that right there mm -hmm. okay one of the one of the issues i see especially around this area and, and i've looked at other other communities we don't really have a lot of buffer for sidewalks from the highway mm -hmm. and when you put a lot of kids on those sidewalks even in a subdivision mm -hmm. and you move it down here to the road section proposed by staff for example and your sidewalk is that close to your roadway mm -hmm. you have no room for error what we're doing is we're putting our people at we're putting our people at risk, and especially when you start talking about on on our county county highways or our city roads where you've got uh, increased speed limits. It, it, it's a it's a real problem. A lot of places have got have, have actually got uh, not really barricades, but more like. Uh, what, are you, what, are you, what would you call it? Curb? A curb? Well, when you go with the curb versus the. Uh, yeah, instead, versus of a swell, a swell, than, instead of a swell. Then, then when they've got, a, they've got a sure enough curb, so when you hit it, you know you've hit it, you ain't going to run over, you know, well, 25 that, school children. They give us our foot back. I'm sorry? Because the, the curb will give us six inches back. Yeah. I'll give you six well, I'm just saying down here on on this so one, you know where they move. So here was the yeah. sidewalk over here, and here's the road. Now the sidewalk's only about a foot from the edge of the highway or yeah. edge of the road. Anyway, it's it's important. Right. It's going to be real important. The more traffic we get in there. All right, Larry, I'm going to go ahead and open the public yeah. hearing this time. Um, open the public hearing. This is SD 2218 on County Road 13, north, uh, south of. 32 uh, Greenfield subdivision. Does anybody wish to speak to this item? Gary Gover, <laughs> 300 Lincoln Street. The uh, on the road section, uh, uh, where when the grass strip is narrow, a foot or two feet, uh, the way it is on Gafer, let's say between uh, Greeno and Section. Uh, what you're going to find is that in the morning after garbage collection, all the garbage cans are going to have been deposited on the sidewalk. And uh, it interferes with the pedestrian activity two days of the week. It's not a good plan. The uh, other thing is, I'd li as, a, as a pedestrian, I would enjoy the distance from the road and having the street trees between me and the vehicles. So I, I think the broader strip, which is used in some subdivisions around here, is, uh, has the, a lot of positive features to offer. So I would, I would recommend that. Uh, By the way, those of us that live out that far, we get garbage once a week, so. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the city limits. They'll get it twice a week. They'll get it twice a week. Yeah, here. <laughs> you are, you yeah, are welcome. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to. I ask the pilots in the yeah, we'll rear get, we'll about three people, there. and I can. So, so, really, is there anything that we can do? I, I, I hear what Art's saying, and I agree. And you know, we had a kid get hit over by my neighborhood, by Fairfield, and and and, and there was some buffer. So I can't imagine. But not much buffer. It wasn't much, but yeah. But so that is a thing. Well, let me let know? me just make sure that the no oh, one wants to speak, and then I'll yeah. close. Anybody else wish to speak to this item? I'll go ahead and close the public hearing at this time. Sorry, Corey. Go ahead. Yeah. So so yeah. Is there any room? Uh, can we do anything? Uh, I mean, we know? can we can build the road section per your subdivision regs. Um, you know, we can take away the six inch strip that we have between the sidewalk and the property line. Uh, we were just 
we were just trying to get something that we were hearing from staff and seeing from a design and from a construction standpoint that where we were seeing issues. As an engineer, do you think a raised curb would, would make the sidewalk safer than? Um, possibly, yeah. Um, the, there's other issues with the raised curb. What does it do uh, with the drainage and the water? With the, I mean, it, the drainage part would be fine. We, we'd still be channeling it to inlets, um, you know, what I, what I see for the most part is when you have the valley type gutter, you don't have to come back in after everything was built and cut all the um, all the curbing out to create all your driveways. In these neighborhoods, that's what happens. They come and cut the back of the curb off, then you have cracking issues with it. That's the biggest issue with the valley. You just pour your um, your side your driveways right up to it. Yeah, it's um, getting mitigated now because they're tearing those up too. So yeah, <laughs> we're, having to, we're having to get those. Uh, um, so that, that's the biggest thing, but I mean, we we can do something that would conform to the sub regs within this road section. But like I said, we were just we were in a meeting and we were throwing it out on the table. This is what we're seeing. This is what utilities is telling us, and that that's where this all started. And he said, you know, why don't you request a waiver while y'all yeah. work on their internal diagrams? Yeah, I get that. I just agree with Art and, and and with the the density of that neighborhood. It's going to be kids there, school yeah. walking, all that. So, you know, if we could just remember the, the little ones, yeah. you know. And the, the, these sidewalks will, if you go out and measure, they'll be farther off the sidewalk than most neighborhoods, including my own. <laughs> we're, we're, at, we're at the two foot mark in my neighborhood with well, Valley. Well, that's another uh, thing. If, if our subdivision regs aren't working, utilities need to let us know why so we can change them so that they do work, which is what apparently has been happening recently. Because like I said, Hunter and I, about what six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, we were having a discussion about, you know, trees being lopped and, you know, people mm -hmm. coming back in with fiber up the top of fiber and no matter even if you, even when you bore, you're still hitting some underground roots sometimes and so forth. And I will also kind of mention, you know, there is flexibility in our regulations, you know, from how you asphalt with, um, but in the city, under the, the standalone city ordinance, um, there's a requirement of 20 foot wide minimum streets um, unless it falls under one of these other categories. So within our regulations, you can be 18 to 22, I believe. Mm -hmm. So you can get gain your foot there by right. removing a foot of asphalt. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we have a conflict. With All right, procedure. sounds good. I think everybody knows everything. So Larry, thank you. And I will entertain a motion. <laughs> like you, may, you can do your subdivision without a you can do your roads without a uh, a, a waiver. Yeah, I mean, no. yeah, we can we can modify the road section. It's just utilities are going to have issues and just other issues that were brought up in that pre-op meeting. So, okay. um, thanks. I, I just don't want it to be denied based on a waiver. We can make it work. Clarify what you said about the width of the road. You can take something out of the road. But yeah, we, if you look at um, a conflict, yeah, our street the road. Um, the kid, anybody. I mean. There's so many of them. I want to make sure I get the right one. And, yeah, in Table 5.3, their asphalt drive lane can be a total of 18 to 20 feet, but the street standards of the city's um, municipal code is a 20-foot drive mm -hmm. aisle. So minimal. we have an internal thing. We got a conflict yeah. between subdivision regulations and, and standalone city ordinances. <laughs> the right, the right of a so uh, I'd love to see a narrower street. And more uh, space for two. The uh, public hearing is closed. Larry, sit down, please. <laughs> and I believe and don't get back up even if I ask you to. <laughs> we need to vote on the waiver separately. And send you a text message. We can vote on the waiver separately. I think we need to vote on the waiver separately. Okay, so agree. let's have a vote first of all on the subdivision, and then secondly, or I'll accept a motion first of all on the subdivision. You can do the waiver. Waiver. waiver goes first. Waiver. First on the waiver, then on the <laughs> on the I move we deny the waiver. I've well, got a motion what? to deny the to waiver. Deny the waiver. Okay. Sorry. All right. Do I have a second? All right, second. Any second. any further discussion? All right. All in favor to deny the waiver, say aye. 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 Any opposed to accept the waiver, say aye. Aye. And uh, so I'm the only one. Yeah, you're darn right. Can I go back and change it now? No. Uh, I'll stick with my vote. I'll see what you want to do. Yeah, next, uh, well, I don't mind. I normally agree with you, Art, but I think this is something we probably need to change. But 
Anyway, uh, next subdivision. Uh, can I get a motion on? Uh, before you and give a motion, I want to let, let's clarify how we now approve the street section. Is everybody yeah, okay if we um, say whatever that final section will be approved by staff? Because they need that before they can start building something. Yes. So y'all yeah, give yes. us that authority. Yes. To, with approval by staff. Yeah, but sure. With the, Good with that? That's what I was. Yes. Wait, hold on. Are we giving you approval with an eight foot landscape strip or There's not? There's no waiver. They have to fit everything within the 50 okay. feet. So yeah. how we move those pieces around? Well, yeah. so we're also giving you approval to move the sidewalk <coughs> next to the street because I think that was a concern. Of, of uh, the, 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 probably what the proposal that they showed Mike, you can go back. The one on top is what Larry's presenting to us. So I think we'll have to get a foot out probably. of that that okay. needs the sidewalk off, off cool. the road. So to answer your question, what will have to happen is the sidewalk will move right on the right-of-way line, um, which conflicts with what the utility department wants. And then we will probably have to go to a two-foot valley gutter or a standard stand-up curb. Um, one of the two is what we'll have to go to. Um, and then that, that will give you your six inches and your six inches. So we'll have the total. That keeps us in compliance with the municipal ordinance, the sub regs and the paving section. Perfect. Sounds good. All right. Do I have a motion on the subdivision? Move to approve subdivision, sub staff recommendations. Removing condition one. Yes. And adding a condition that staff will approve. Okay. Yes, second. I got a motion moving one, adding the staff approval, and I have a second from Corey. Any further? All in favor say aye. Hey, hold up. Aye. Aye. I know it's late. We're opposed say that. We, we got to have a little better motion than that. All right. I so, was wondering, yeah. I was watching so, yeah. Allie go, right. did she yeah. so, <laughs> so we have a motion to approve subject to staff recommendation minus the waiver, but adding that staff can approve subject to it meeting the, the subdivision regs. That's great. Very I, good. Allie, Allie, had Allie had it. Allie had it. Yeah. And then you're going to do it. I mean, when the time comes, then change the regulation if, if, if it's if it's a big deal. We're they, going to be looking into it. Yeah. 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 yeah, we will. Yeah. We didn't ask Larry if he wanted us to tape any, it and give you a time to do that. Any, he doesn't. Any further any further discussion? <laughs> any further? All in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. Any opposed? Say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Oh, this is All right. River horse. Larry? River horse. Well, me too. All right, this is River Horse. Let's go. This is SD 22.19, final plat approval. It's a public hearing to consider the request of the applicant of Dewberry on behalf of the owner, Dilworth Development, for final plat approval of River Horse, a 27 lot major subdivision. It's approximately 22 acres. It's located a quarter mile north of Gayfer Avenue on the east side of Blueberry Lane, north of North Station subdivision, and is currently zoned R2. On the screen, the left side is highlighted in blue, the R2 zone property just north of R1 zone, North Station. On the right is the aerial. You can see it was uh, mostly an existing farm field. On the screen is the plat. You can see it's connecting to the Calibre Street on the east southeastern corner and then stubbing out to what is Blueberry on the west side. Again, site data zone. It, right. it wraps all the way. If you look, it's part of the wetlands wraps all the way around. Okay. It's not, they're not separated. They're all continuous. Uh, some of the, so the site data, as I said, it's R2 and does conform. Some general comments. The plat must be recorded within 120 days after final approval. Sidewalks and street trees not installed have a performance bond or the performance bond agreement to be installed within two years. The engineer has provided his certificate for design and construction of the improvements constructed in the subdivision. Baldwin County will be paving Blueberry Lane, connecting Calibre Street, providing a second, providing the secondary entrance. There is a temporary turnaround will be required until Calibre Street is connected to Blueberry Lane. Uh, the follow-up activities we've seen before is they need to provide a copy of the recorded plat, copy of the recorded O&M agreement, and that the maintenance and guarantee agreement is executed by the developer. The mayor signs this agreement to fully execute it. Uh, remember to include the instrument number from the recorded plat and add 30 days in paragraph three. Uh, recommendation and staff recommends approval of SD 22.19 River Horse Subdivision Final Plat with the following conditions. One, the completion of any outstanding punch list items not completed prior to signing the final plat. 
Lot 13 shall remain a temporary turnaround until Blueberry Lane and Calibre Street are connected. And three, this condition was added after the staff report um, was sent out. But three is that the temporary turnaround shall be installed prior to issuance of the first building permit. I'd be happy to answer. Any Be happy to answer uh, any questions on behalf of staff. Uh, any questions for staff at this Al time? Al Finley is with us from Dewberry. I have a question because I remember when we presented this um, a long time ago. I can't remember. Um, wasn't there a bridge that needed to go over that, the wetlands? There, There is currently sewer line that runs across the wetlands. So there, there is not a bridge Am I making this up? that connects the there two. Was conversation there was discussion that, about because uh, <laughs> it was it was mentioned on the tracery project, and that was never done. It was never a part of the plans. It was a discussion, um, and, and and there was a talk of putting a bridge over the sewer line. Um, but if you remember, there was phase. These were presented as the bills phase one and two. These, it was a part of the bills number two subdivision that was created at the creation of the verandas. And then these came in simultaneously together presented that looked like they were phased together, but they were presented at the same planning commission meeting where that sewer line was going to connect. And there was discussion of using that connection going across the sewer line and through the wetlands to also be some type of pedestrian connectivity, but never actually made it into any con solid conditions of approval for that. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, this public hearing, does anybody from the public wish to speak? Well, does the developer wish to add anything at this time? All right, um, I'll go ahead and uh, open the public hearing at this time. Anybody from the public wish to speak to this item? In that case, I'll close the public. I will say the 13th council meeting on the 13th should be the paperwork for the county and the city to accept Blueberry. So that work will be done. Okay. So a lot of work's been done there as well. All right. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing at this time. Commissioners? Yeah, I'll make a motion to um, approve SD 2219 um, with uh, staff following staff conditions. All right, I have a motion to approve SD 2219 following staff conditions, the three conditions. Do I have a second? Second. All, uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. One more. Um, so y'all y'all stick with us because we need some feedback. So this is a formal review. Um, Idlewild PUD is an existing 10 acre PUD, I think from I can't remember what year, 2007. It's five commercial lots. 2005, four or five. Or five. Okay. So um, this is adjacent to Idlewild residential subdivision. Um, and we have an applicant looking at uh, purchasing that and, and making an amendment to that PUD. Um, this is the lot, this is what's currently approved. Um, this is on Highway 10, 181, straight across from the light at, at Walmart. So if mm -hmm. you come out of Walmart at the light there, that centers up with, with this property. So, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. backs up Where? to Margaret Drive. Say that again. You know, where you come out on 181 from Walmart at the light. Yeah, on the south at side. Fairhope Avenue. No, 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 no. no. Come down 181 no, at the light. So the behind the car wash. Walmart? The, the green space. On, on the right page where we're looking, where north is to the this, this is that side entrance into Walmart. I oh, got it, I got it, okay. You know, there's it like goes. a car wash there, maybe an auto park auto store or something store. like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you ready? Oh, that light. Yes, it does. Going on oh, 181. Man. You, you got it now. Oh, you throwing me. You fooling We'll get me. out of here for midnight. <laughs> um, so th this is the site plan. Um, we d we've had some conversations for a month or so uh, about a particular a potential project. Um, and, and I'll let them speak on this site plan. So I'm going to just kind of tell you how we got here. This is one of the closest things we've seen to um, mixed use and some of the, the – uh, what NBD and you know the the zoning districts were in place years ago, so this is providing a, a retail commercial. Uh, since we started the conversation, the hotel is uh, being proposed. So Ken Clavin, 
If he's here, I'm going to let him take the reins here and let him present this project. There's a couple of specific things I want to look at here. It doesn't meet standard heights, so we're 37 feet high. Um, you know, so there's there's a few nuances here. It needs to get some feedback there. It is a PUD. We can do that within a PUD and make an exception without creating a precedent. There's some potential green space things we'll figure out when we get there, but this is more about Ken's presentation to you. Right. And hopefully we'll get some feedback. Evening. Um, my name is Ken Cleveland, Cleveland Properties. Um, I'm not sure I was prepared for a presentation. I, I was really hoping to receive your comments based on a informal presentation of the um, of the uh, site plan. The uh, 10 acres uh, we have uh, owned now for about six months, and our plan is to create a mixed-use development that would mimic some of the uh, architecture of downtown Fairhope. In fact, we've named the development Fairhope East. Our plan is to um, anchor it with a hotel uh, and we have received approval from Hilton for the Tempo flag. Uh, when I say we, I mean our hotel developers, which is Integral Hospitality out of Birmingham. It would be a approximately 100 uh, room hotel of limited amenities, probably just a restaurant, um, and a swimming pool on the second floor, on the second floor roof. So when Hunter talks about exceeding the height um, limits that would be for a small section of the hotel only. Um, <clears throat> we um, would um, infill the rest of the property with a mix of restaurant, um, office, some small residential, and uh, retail. Uh, we've received a number of, um, frankly, we've received a number of letters of intent over the, um, over the uh, transom everything from small um, uh, franchises for um, uh, athletic conditioning, uh, some of the restaurants in downtown Mobile who would like to have outlets here, um, and some small office space. The idea is to create a village concept, and that's why you see a center walking street through the middle of the complex. Um, a lot of green space. Uh, since I submitted the plan, uh, what was it, uh, last Thursday, I think, we have had our uh, green space plan, our landscaping plan designed. We're in the middle of our photometrics plan. Um, we have accommodated the three heritage oaks on the property, as you can see. That was done as a result of a tree survey that was just completed. We have um, accommodated the wetland buffers on the north. Um, and. Um, have um, begun final engineering drawings for the drainage, the retention. Um, the idea would be to connect with golf cart access at a minimum to the Idlewild uh, sub development in the rear. We've had conversations with some of the um, representatives of the Homeowners Association there. In fact, I'll be meeting them uh, in Fairhope tomorrow morning talk more about what their interests are, what their needs are, what their concerns are. Um, and um, other than that, we uh, are working on our master development plan uh, as um, the... Uh, now, let me help you a little bit, King. Sure. I, I, this is kind of a... We'll, we'll tag team this one a little bit. Good enough. Um, it is a little bit of an informal view and, and applicants show up and not know how to use our computers and everything, so we did supply a, a little bit more information. So um, some of the restaurant and retail, as you see, and what, what those spacing would, would be in numbers. Um, this is kind of the layout of the, the as the hotel looks. Um, and if I misspeak, you just punch me. Sure, go ahead. Um, two story, I think this shows 121, but you know, that unit's hotel. But Frankly, the heritage trees have knocked that down a little bit, so. Good, we, yeah. we like that. <laughs> um, you know, this is the, does show the two-story. Um, you're seeing the, the roof there, as Ken said. It's, it's not all of the, the entire building. Um, and, and there's some graphics, I think, more more to show the style as opposed to then the, this is, I believe, a five-story building. Yeah. So more showing the, the style that this brand uh, typically provides. Um, uh, you know, there's... There's a couple of things I do want to mention because I want to bring up the what the neighbors' concerns were 
Um, is the current PUD connect to Idlewild or no, Shell Connection? No, it does not. Um, that was a, one of the concerns. That was that yeah, was actually, always. Connectivity is one of those things that really is great, but nobody likes it when you're connecting to them. Obviously, um, well, I can let me get, let me give you a background of that because that's no. that was why we looked at this this way, and this is what we really need to get to. Um, the council ultimately decided that the, the connectivity was not necessary in this one because of the Ottawa folks. So instead, a buffer was provided. It's called caving. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's that's something. Um, it, it does change the the pedestrian nature of this yeah. by having that road cut right down the middle. Right. Um, so you know we we have supported that, uh, but but did say we still want. Yeah. If somebody goes to a restaurant and has a couple of beers. It's a lot better. They go out on one eighty one and then to Fairhope Avenue and then to the entrance of Idaho and drive into Idaho. We're hoping so they're staying at the hotel. Instead of just walking know. straight on back to their house. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. well, that's where the golf cart can come in and, and walk <laughs> right. through the pedestrian. Yeah. Um, one of the things I want to kind of talk about is, in, in, in of course, connectivity. If that's where we want to go with it, but. Um, the green space is different from the landscape, so the green space provided. They are retaining a 20-foot um, resident of buffer against the residents. That's not required. They're providing that, maintaining it from their formal PUD. Um, uh, we would like to be able to count that as green space. Is That's not standard, but this is a PUD. Um, there's going to be, like I said, there's wet, wetlands on the other side. We still haven't seen the full uh, wetland report on that. But there's also going to have to be detention, so not a lot of green space per our green space requirements, because a lot of this is in highway setbacks too. So getting that pedestrian connectivity from from the north to the south into this property is incredibly important. It's showing the landscape here; they're already trying to accommodate that. Um, but but I think we're going to push up against some. I, I think the biggest thing as far as me, and I'll just speak for me, and if anybody else wants to throw out, I'm just going to speak for me to hopefully go eat dinner. Mm -hmm. But my biggest thing on this, I think the pedestrian connectivity is a real big thing in the rear, and I think the streetscape from the front and the buffering and the landscape in such a, you know, such a high-profile area, those are going to be the two items I'm going to be the most interested with, like with the height, how close and how shielded is it and as far as the green space since there aren't a lot of uh residents going in there um you know most of the hotel people aren't going to be looking at you know going out and throwing the football with their kid in the backyard necessarily maybe a little bit of green space for that and you know i've done that before you but you got a swimming pool and a workout room for the folks going in there and, and lord knows that you know fairhope needs on the weekends hotel rooms i remember we used to have soccer tournaments um Fairhope would, would allow the their soccer fields to be used free, and we'd have you know 130 teams, and 95 percent of them are paying room tax up in Daphne, um, and so we could certainly use rooms on the weekend without a doubt. But but I, I like the overall concept. But those are going to be my biggest things. It's just the streetscape and the and I love the way you're protecting the live oaks, but the streetscape, the connectivity in the rear. Um, you know, going to be my biggest issues Thank looking you. at that. Okay. I think it's great. Especially with the restaurants, I think having out a while where people can walk, I mean, that'll, to me, you know, someone might come in and gripe and complain, but after it's all said and done, I would think if I lived in Ottawa, I'd love to have a restaurant I could just sometimes, you know, walk to and walk back from. That, to me, really increases, you know, my, my lifestyle tremendously. Can I ask you what your thoughts are about us mimicking some of the um, – Architecture of downtown Fairhope. I just—that's up to you. It's eclectic. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, yeah right. when, you, when you let us know what it is, what, what sounds well, great. It's not my office. <laughs> that would look horrible. <laughs> We're still figuring out what Fairhope's architecture is. But, I mean, for a bit eclectic, that's kind of it was founded by eclectic people. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't just have one style. Sure. Yeah. How many? I just looked at the parking. Do you have yeah, enough awesome. parking for that big hotel? Is it in? We're some 40 spaces short, I believe, overall. So what we do allow in our zoning ordinance is a shared parking model. You know, different hours, 
are going to generate traffic at parking at different times of the day. So I think that's the concept that's exactly. being provided. So the offices will be gone at night when the hotel people get back. And exactly. We've got a few residential units mm -hmm. um, that will be moving in, in, in around. Um, we'll point out one thing. I think we've got a, one solution here, Ken, um, and we can kind of work on the fly. The drive-through, we saw some problems there with the circulation thing coming uh, this way. Mm -hmm. That might work better as a, as a one-way circulation route and allow you to move a little bit of concrete there and need to bring your road, your, your path right, right along the front. So we originally went with the drive-through really because the original PUD had um, requested and received the approval for a drive-through. And when we purchased the property, we were flooded with coffee franchises that wanted to be on the site. We're not married to the drive-through. If it's something that the um, that the commission feels is less than uh, desirous, that's not something that we can do. Right on the left side. On the side. north side. On the north side. Yeah. But it's not too visible when it's. Uh, yeah. I'm just Hunter's idea of a one-way might allow you to get a little extra parking, a little less paving than two ways anyway. As these cross. That Anybody have any other concerns they'd have about this? So we can the only concern I have is that it, you know, backs up to residential. You need to be uh, aware and respectful of the lighting, uh, the hotel lighting, and 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 the height. I, I think the pool sounds fabulous. I think all, these are all things that we need. It's a great concept. I think that if we just recognize where it is that we're trying to blend it into a node it's a perfect spot for a node but it's still we have to transition these residential homes that it's a neighborhood into that so right. I think if you can make that backside very inviting and backyardish sure. low lighting a lot of landscape so there, there there's 40 feet there that's on there. that parking site parking lot side sorry hunter that's margaret drive that's all the lower that's the smaller lot lines that's not part of um idlewild it's a little another subdivision over there on the south side on the south side mm -hmm. gotcha. we think we're presenting to the idlewild homeowners a improvement over an existing pud which could be built on now obviously well so we and i don't know if idlewild joined with Hazel Lane and uh, and Margaret. So you may want to make sure that you have got them on board too. I have not reached out to them yet. I will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, you believe they're a joint homeowners association? They're separate. Oh, they are. They separate. are. They're separate. You've got three different developments. That's over there. You've got uh, Idlewild. I think it's Jackson Place is what it's called, or Jackson Oaks. And then you have um, what's the new one? That's the uh, um, uh, I just lost my brain of thought. Um, I can tell you the developer, but it corners up on on uh, Thompson Hall Road, backs up to Idlewild because I I don't go Idlewild goes all the way to Thompson Hall Road. Mm -hmm. It takes up the whole block. So the, those are all homeowners that will be interested and and eager to to know what's going on. And I think you know the more that you communicate. And are transparent the more they're going to be on your side and thank you yeah i expect a litany of comments tomorrow morning at the meeting and we'll, we'll welcome now i think it's a, a really great concept but the lighting and i guess i would think the noise would you, if you have a limit on your pool time you know at night you know sure. you don't want people out there doing cannonballs at midnight sure. that kind of thing. it sounds fun but <laughs> yeah. i thought you said the pool was the pool's it's a rooftop door. Oh, yeah. rooptop. Yeah. Oh, when he said second floor, I was thinking inside. Which is not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah. I mean, there is 20 feet on that side too, and the landscape buffer already. But it's it's more about the the you know the details of the light trespass and how you shield it and where it's pointed and all that. You know, all the the devils in the details. Sure. That if I were living there and when we've had other commercial adjacent to residential that's what we hear is they don't want to see the source of the light you know probably more up lighting like just really good landscape lighting rather than you know parking lot lighting mm -hmm. yeah and and the pool lighting too would be something you could 
No, you can just. I mean, I'm sure that they get it. enough lighting from Walmart, but that's. <laughs> I mean, that's tucked <laughs> tucked well, with, way within back. Within the city, they have to actually meet our zoning requirements. Mm -hmm. the zero zero foot handle in the property. Yeah. I mean, they, they and just not seeing the source. Ken talked about the photo metrics. That's what will tell us about that lighting. Make sure we that. So they'll meet that before we put any landscape up, which will also help with UV this year. Anybody else have anything else? All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, for your time. thank you for coming. Thank yes, sir. Thank you. Good project. Looks like. Hunter, is that it? Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Oh, no. Let's. Uh, <laughs> all in favor say. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>